Yeah, that's that's fine. I see Hello. that Dave. Can anybody hear me? Yeah, we can hear Dave. I see Dave oh, has okay, his. Dave's in. All right, we now have a quorum. Hey, Dave. You're here. We can't see you, but we can hear you. But that's that's pretty good. Um. Okay, so we now have a quorum. So uh, welcome those of you who are here, and those of you who are tuned in. This is the um, Barry Logan Planning Group, and it's the. Uh, January meeting, we've got a lot to do tonight, so it's gonna be a long meeting, I'm afraid. They have been a long meeting, mostly uh, because of um, our update, the update of the general plan of the community plan. Um, so let's get started with that. The roll call, I'm just sort of checking people off. So one nice thing about Zoom, I can just see everybody that's here. Uh, I'm here, Tina, Matt, Dave, Philomena, and Dennis. I don't see, so far I don't see Tom Ryan or Josie. Uh, Josie sent me a note saying she may not be able to make it. I don't see Klaus or Hector. Are you out there and we just can't see you? I see Klaus. I see Klaus, the top of Klaus's head. Um, so um, is there, uh, the first thing we do is adopt the agenda, the agenda for tonight is, are there any additions, corrections? Anybody wanna add something, take something away? Not seeing any discussion. I suggest um, uh, if it's okay with you, I, I haven't seen any objections that we just move on and, and assume that it's accepted. Um, tonight we have um, Michael Prince from the city of San Diego to, to uh, uh, conduct a workshop where we're gonna take a couple of action items. Um, and then after that, we will go into the rest of our agenda. One of the important things tonight with our agenda, by the way, is the establishment of a uh, uh, election committee and what all that means. So um, we all need to be uh, prompt and move along because that's gonna be a lot of discussion, I'm sure. Anyway, with that, I will introduce uh, Michael Prince and ask him to take over and present uh, this phase. This is, uh, which, which, let's see, which, I think this is, this is workshop four, is that about right? Yeah, that sounds about right. Uh, okay. I apologize for not knowing the exact number offhand, yep. but well, tonight tonight we are, uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, my name is Michael Prince. I'm a senior planner with the planning department and the community planner for Barrio Logan. Uh, we wanted to present two items tonight for review and consideration by the board. The first item, Jonathan Avila with uh, our um, public spaces section will be presented on the recreation element. And then I will be presenting uh, the draft land use and zoning map, uh, and then getting into an overview of the regulations and sort of the next steps. So with that, I'll hand it over to Jonathan for the recreation component. Thank you, Michael. Let me just share my screen and I'll get started. Can I, can I interrupt you just a second? Michael, sure. would, you, would you spend a moment and describe where you think we are in the process? Yeah, so I would say that right now, let me just start by sort of saying, well, how about I cover that after we sort of get into okay, the, that's fine. Uh, just, why don't we cover that at the end it. in terms of where we are and sort of where we're going, that it'd okay. probably be easier to do that at the end. Fair enough, I'll agree with that. Okay, All right. go ahead, Jonathan. All right, thank you. Thanks, Mark. Let me share my screen. Say one, one last thing. I'm sorry, I forget this. Um, uh, this Go is ahead. Good, but, um, I think you'll, you'll note that um, Liz from our office, who most of you know is a, is a planner for the city a year and a half ago, um, or for seven years, and she left a year and a half ago, is operating the, the, the screen tonight. Uh, Marissa cannot make it. Um, I'm sorry to say Marissa's husband is fighting for his life in the hospital with COVID. Oh, shit. And she's um, having a very difficult time herself. She also has COVID, so is her father-in-law. But she, her father-in-law's in the hospital. Uh, her husband's in ICU, and she's struggling with it. So I think all of you know everything that Marissa does for this community. Um, she's, she's a true angel, um, uh, putting together food banks and just supporting everybody, including this group. So I think she would love it if we just all just individually, just remember her, remember her husband, 
say a prayer for him and just uh, let her know when you can that we're all thinking about her. That means a lot. Anyway, I'm sorry. I, I, I just, I, I should have said that at the beginning, but uh, we- I'm just, glad you did. Okay, onward. Jonathan, back to you. I'm sorry. I won't, I won't interrupt anymore. No, no problem, Mark. That's some very important information. I'm sorry to hear that she's going through that and our thoughts are with her. Yeah, uh, just want to, before Jonathan starts, just echo that, Mark, that, you know, sort of we at the city are very sorry to hear that. Marissa has been um, an incredible resource for me personally. And so my condolences to her and her family and thoughts go out to her. Well, with that, I'll, I'll get started. Uh, good evening. My name is Jonathan Avila. I'm a park planner and registered landscape architect with the city of San Diego's planning department. Thank you for joining us tonight to discuss the recreation element. Tonight we have three main object objectives and they are to provide an overview of the recreation element and park requirements, provide an overview of the potential future park opportunities and solicit feedback to guide park programming. The recreation element draws inspiration and guidance from four major citywide plan policy documents. Those documents are the general plan, climate action plan, the multiple species conservation program sub area plan, and the urban forestry management plan. In order to provide recreational opportunities for all residents within Barrio Logan, the recreation element sets five major goals. These goals seek to develop a park system that is sustainable, protects existing parks, preserves natural resources, expands the pedestrian and bike networks, connects parks, and preserves Choyas Creek and San Diego Bay. To implement these goals, the recreation element establishes a series of policies. These next three slides highlight the key recreational policies the city will use as a foundation when developing future park opportunities. These policies cover the acquisition of available land and improvement to existing parks, the repurposing of public right of way for additional parkland, development of public plazas and parks, which help to connect the community to the bay and waterfront, identify all possible funding sources, design new recreational facilities as one interconnected system, and link park, parks to open space. That's fine, baby. That's fine. Since the plan was introduced in 2013, several major recreational priorities have been achieved. These achievements include Chicano Park being designated a regional park, improvements to Chicano Park, including a new playground, handball court, and skate park, renaming the Bay Bridge Community Center as Chicano Park Community Center, and improvements to the Paradise Senior Center. The map on the screen highlights the potential future recreational opportunities within Barrio Logan. Uh, we will discuss three of these opportunities over the next few slides. Currently, the bar currently Barrio Logan is meeting the 2.8 acres of parkland per thousand residents standard established by the 2008 general plan. The community is projected to grow substantially over the next 30, 30 years, making it difficult for parkland in the community to keep up with demand. The recreation element identifies opportunities which will expand the park acreage, or sorry, identifies future potential park opportunities which aim to help the community achieve the park standard. These opportunities will expand the park acreage in addition to expanding the acreage, the recreation element encourages improvements to existing park parks, increasing their recreational value and usefulness to the community. Tonight, we will discuss three of the future potential park opportunities, Boston Avenue Linear Park, Perkins Elementary, and Choyas Creek Trail. Uh, 
Boston Avenue Linear Park is located on the east side of Boston Avenue between 27, South 27th Street and South 32nd Street. It is approximately three acres in size, a third mile long, and varies in widths from 20 to 85 feet wide. Boston Avenue is part of the city's bike master plan network. Any improvements made to this park are, be are a benefit to the entire city and will improve mobility and access. These two pictures show the current condition along Boston Avenue. The picture on the left is from the pedestrian bridge looking south. <clears throat> and the picture on the right is looking north near the intersection of 32nd and Boston Avenue. I would like you to consider the following questions and write down your thoughts so that we can discuss them at the end of the presentation. What would you like to see in this park? What are the challenges associated with this location? At the end of the pre presentation, we will have time to discuss your answers and ideas. We're looking forward to receiving public input on ways to better activate the public park so that it can best serve the needs of the community. Troy's Creek Park and Trail starts at the intersection of Boston Avenue and South 32nd Street. It follows the top of the slope along the five freeway in Troy's Creek. It is approximately a quarter mile long and varies in widths. This trail will connect Boston Avenue Linear Park with Troy's Creek. Once again, I'd like you to consider the following questions and write down your thoughts. What would you like to see in this park? What are the challenges associated with this location? Establishing a joint use facility at Par Perkins Elementary is a key part of the future park system within Barrio Logan. A joint use agreement would allow Barrio Logan residents to use the school fields as a park before and after school hours. The design of the joint use facility would follow the general development plan process outlined in council policy 600-33. This policy gives the community a voice in the design process. We currently do not have a timeline for this project. The San Diego, San Diego Unified School District is currently considering expanding Perkin, Perkins Elementary by acquiring the property just west of the school. The recreation element will encourage the city to pursue a joint use agreement covering the expanding expanded campus if the expansion includes fields and play areas. For additional information on the campus expansion, please send an email to the San Diego Unified School District at sdusdfacilitiesinfo at sand or sandy.net. Our next steps are incorporating today's feedback into the recreation element, uh, element draft. After the entire Barrio community plan draft is completed, it will be released for public review. Please stay involved in the process. On the screen, you will see our contact information. Feel free to email us with any questions. This brings me to the end of my presentation. I'm available to answer any questions you may have. Um, anybody have any, who has a question? Somebody must. Is that Philomena. Bob? Oh. Philomena, what do you think about the Boston Avenue Park? She's mute, okay. Is, uh, is there potential for other sites to be in considered for this? Uh, of course, yeah. Uh, are you talking about other potential um, sites within the community for park space? Yeah, because I, I, you know, I, I think um, I think that's a a good use of of space that's not currently being used, but it is a park on a freeway. Um, I and. Uh, I think there's that that battery farm, which is almost the the gateway to downtown and barrio. We've talked about before. 
I don't know, Mark, you know, the, the battery farm project. Yep. That would be a beautiful park. And then there's also the, the um, 50,000 square feet across the street from the school that just got abandoned a while ago that the, um, that blue building, the pipe supply company, um, you know, the property, Mark. Uh, yeah, that one is, yeah, that, there are a lot of people that are chasing that one. Um, that was actually, that property was actually set aside for park and the, and the, and yeah. the city planning. It's, it's zoned quasi public. And at this point, it's just become a trap house. It's, it's been de deemed a nuisance property and it's like full gang task force has to clean it out every week. There's homeless people selling drugs out of there with security cameras set up and laptops. It's craziest thing I've ever seen. Um, yeah. But that actually was zoned for and set aside for a park. And, and those are kind of more in the middle of the community. And I just think that, that something, you know, not bordering the freeway or the canyon might be utilized a lot more by the, by the um, community. But those are just Great. two big ones. Thank you. Thank you for sharing that. Uh, if, you if anybody has any other um, ideas, we welcome them as well. Uh, my, thought about, uh, my thought about Boston is that there's a chance there for landscape to provide a, real, a very serious buffer to, to the interstate, which means, you know, like along the edge or something, some real, really heavy uh, planting of trees to begin to shield both noise and, uh, and pollution, I think, to some degree. Mark, so, I just wanted to point it out that there's people on the public that are raising their hand, but I don't know if at this point only the planning board are... Um... No, that's fine. Yeah. No, we'll, we'll give them a chance for in a minute. I'm surprised Philomena has not jumped in here, but uh, anybody else from the board want to want to have a discussion. I'm sorry, I was on mute and I was trying to connect a few other uh, residents that are trying to get connected. Um, we have uh, about approximately seven residents and I'm trying to connect three more. So that's where my silence is at. So definitely would like to give my res uh, my little neighbors an opportunity to speak. So when we get there, thank you, my Mark. Okay. Uh, well, Maybe we're there. If no, does anybody else on the on the board uh, have any comments they'd like to make about the parks? The, uh, the I do. Okay. Um, so, wow. Go ahead. So yeah, I was going to just touch on the sound wall. Um, that that'd be great if you, that could be added or be created with um, some shrubbery. Uh, in addition to that, uh, the trail going to Choya's um, Creek side. I don't know if a park on that side is a good idea. The trail is a great idea, but I don't know about the par a park there. It's just so tucked away that, you know, I just, we know that's going to be a homeless encampment. Uh, so I think the so trail would it, it would be mainly a trail. I, I think it would be a trail all the way um, with sort of like areas to rest and stop and take a look at the view. I would have I would banter, so I wouldn't envision that there would be um, your typical park amenity is like a large field or anything just because there's not space there for that. It'll be more of a trail connection. Got it. Okay. Yeah. With lighting, hopefully, and all that. Uh, Jonathan, relative to Perkins Elementary site, the one on the west side, mm -hmm. uh, right across the street of Maine, there was discussion um, some time ago about the concept of, of digging down a bit and putting in um, parking underneath the park. Is that is that is there any discussion about that now, or was that uh, that's something that? Not that I'm aware of, um, Michael. Are you aware of any underground parking at Perkins Elementary? No, that hasn't some. That's not something I'm I'm aware of. Obviously, they're going to be going through their own outreach process, and that could be something that could be discussed as part of that. But in my conversations with the school district on this, I was not aware of any potential underground parking. Got it. Okay. No, I don't. I think it's just an idea that was floating around, Michael. And I just, I, I, it's perfect. I just got a text from uh, Hector Viegas, who is uh, listening to the meeting on his phone, but he can't talk. He says, um, "Mark, uh, can you ask Mark Hector, or Hector? Is it the number that ends on seventy-six? The number that termina en siete cero seis." I think I've allowed him to talk now. Okay, okay. all right. I don't know, I don't, I don't, Hector, I don't know if you can hear this. I'm sure you can hear it. So. Hector, no sé si me escuchas, no sé. Okay, um, is there anybody else on the board? If yeah. not, 
alguien más de la junta let's open it up to, uh, let's open vamos up to ahora a abrirlo a la, la conversación al público Liz, you want to open up, uh, let the public, uh, quieres escuchar well, I think it's also important, Mark, that we Creo let que Hector speak. Que que Hector hable. I've unmuted Julie. Well, Hector, I don't know. If, bueno, Hector, Hector, if you can hear us, you want to just send Hector, me what, si what would you like to say? Oh. Hector, if This virtual stuff is painful, isn't it? Um, Esto es muy doloroso, este asunto virtual. <laughs> Can I uh, hop in, Mark, while we're waiting for... ¿Puedo interceder, Mark, o estamos esperando a alguien? Sure. Um, I just wanted to say that... Um, Solo quiero that decir que... I, I, I can hear the interpreter. Can everyone else hear it? Yeah, Chrissy, we can hear you for some thing. reason. Everybody yeah, I can hear her, too. I, yes, it's Vanessa. Vanessa, you're in the English channel. Hello? ¿Me escuchan? Yes, yeah, we... we can hear you in the English channel. I'm in the Spanish one. I'm sorry. Oh, okay. Um, I don't know. Mine is kind of nice. <laughs> hey, Jonathan, would you take this this image down so we can sort of see each other? It helps actually to organize. Sure. Thank you. Um, um, so I just wanted to say that um, EHC has been working with Philly and the and the uh, community members on Boston Avenue for a long time, envisioning the park on Boston. Um, we've also been working with the city um, and we've received some grant funding to to start the design process when the city is, is geared up and ready and other in talks with Caltrans. Um, all that to say that um, we envision a bus community process of designing this park because as Klaus mentioned, there's definitely issues with connectivity to Choyas and um, the encampment problems and all of that. Um, so I, just to say that uh, when this park moves forward, EHC uh, is, is going to help um, engage as much community input as possible. We're committed to making sure that this park truly serves the needs of the residents on Boston and that and that their voice heard uh, loud and clear. And so I think that when the design process starts, the city will, will uh, you know, coupled with us and, and community players have to have um, a, a more dedicated uh, discussion around just Boston. I don't, I don't think when, when uh, a CPG meeting and this limited time is, is gonna be enough to kind of go over all the issues and, and all the things that um, the community wants and needs and is fearful of there. That's all. Well, Thanks. Julie, just to clarify that, what, what goes yes. in the community plan is the, is, the, is the sort of concept of establishing Did you guys hear me? Rec area. Sorry. I... But, but then to go on after that, um, once it's established, um, then there's a follow-up process that, that, that it does involve the community with, with all these parks. So that, this, is, this will not, um, cut that process off. Am I right, Jonathan? Correct. Um, so once uh, the, the design gets kind of kicked off, it, it starts the GDP process or the general development plan process, uh, which is, is guided by council policy 600-33. And that sets out um, how the public can get involved and the amount of meetings, um, the type of information that needs to be um, translated to there or given to the community and, and all that. So if, if you want to get a little more background on how that process works, council policy 600-33 is, is pretty well written and laid out. Thank you, Jonathan, for that. Okay. I'm sorry, I'm just texting Hector. I, you know, I don't, has anybody heard from Hector? I don't know that he's connected. I just texted him to see if he has any comments. What, who else is out there from the public that would like to speak? Phil, Manny, do you have your, your, your group together? It's Kathleen. I just uh, allowed Kathleen Lippitt. Uh, yes, Hi. also Pablo would like to speak. Okay. Good evening. I just have a quick question about the parks point system that I wondered if you could answer. It's a frequent criticism that the city's points system uh, is problematic. And the example they often provide is that the city assigns the same value to a 10 foot square foot interpretive sign as they do to a one acre park. Could you clarify if that's true or that's not true? Or if it is, why would they do that? Thank you. Um, I guess Mark and Michael, I 
I, I know this conversation, this presentation should is on Barrio Logan. I don't know if you want me to kind of diverge and go to talk about the park's master plan. I'd, I'd like to keep the conversation on Barrio Logan if possible. Okay, so you, you're saying that's a park's master plan issue? Correct. That, yeah, that that question was geared towards the park's master plan. Okay, so the so uh, Kathleen, the park's master plan is is on our agenda tonight. Also, it'll be okay. up a little bit later. Um, it's being presented by Susan Baldwin, and it's going to be quite a serious. Uh, All right. Thank you. So, yeah, thank it, you. the thing that I would add to sort of Jonathan's comment is as it relates to sort of our effort. This is a workshop item that's really focused on the Barrio Logan plan update, and one of the things that you know, we're, we're really looking to do is complete the 2013 plan update and address some of the changes that have occurred since that time, but still within the framework of the 2013 plan. So uh, what Jonathan has presented is really looking at opportunities that have sort of been addressed through the 2013 plan and that we wanted to discuss further uh, here tonight. Perfect. Okay, anybody else from the public? Hi there, this is Katie Pipes, and I, I was asked to, I got the little notification to be unmuted. Is it okay if I chime in? Sure. Thank you so much. So I live um, right at the corner of Boston and South 32nd, and I just wanted to emphasize just from our end of the community, um, sometimes we feel a little bit like we're sort of on the periphery, and I know that we have all of the beautiful things happening on Logan and um, and over in the park. Um, and um, I would just like to encourage maybe the board members and um, the community to be open-minded to, um, even though the park is on the freeway, it doesn't mean that like we shouldn't have um, park space and we want to be included in, in the community. And um, we also want to see that like, our residential parking on Boston, the, we, we currently have one road, just um, the, I'm gonna get it wrong. I think it's the south end of the road um, is for residential and we would love to see both sides for residential. We would um, love to have more lighting. I have put in multiple requests for lighting and we never have enough points. Um, we've had so many um, people get um, on acts like have accidents. We have a, a freeway entrance at 29th street and I've had at least I've put in three or four times to have the, the, um, the, the, the stop sign evaluated. It always fails, but I've been hit with, uh, I've almost been hit with my children and there've been multiple, um, multiple, um, accidents where there was a woman who, who, um, was like hospitalized a couple of years ago. And so I think that the implementation of the park would actually be um, a, a good culture shift for our street and for our residents. And um, I did hear someone say that there um, is like, you know, homeless transient community um, in our, on our side. And you're absolutely right. And the number one contributing factor to that is actually SA recycling. And um, they're a huge problem in our community. They pollute our our neighborhood. Um, they have noise violations, and um, they also um, bring in transients all day, every day for their recycling. So I would just argue that we need um, a landscaping change in our neighborhood to actually make it safe for our community. And sorry, that's my baby. So I think I'll conclude my comments. But thank you so much for hearing my concern. Okay, Katie, thank you very much. And I know you've been active in that regard for a long time. And I think when you talk about lighting, you're really speaking about stoplights, traffic lights, but I think. Um, but at any rate, just to, to, again, to, to continue the discussion we just had with Julie, the community plan is, is what the, 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 the job of the community plan is to say there's going to be a park there. And I think we all agree there's going to be a park there. I assume you agree. Wonderful. With well. uh, and then, but then, the, but then there's a follow up that goes into the details of exactly what happens about playgrounds, lighting, and all the rest. Okay. Right, thank you so much. Sure. Correct. We, we assume that you will take part in that. I know you will. Um, who else, is there anybody else from the public uh, list? Yes. Uh, my name is Pablo, Pablo Castaneda, and um, I just got a couple of questions, maybe more, but... Um, 
this one one of the questions is the park is going to have a fence or is going to be without fence around uh so those types of details will be flushed out during the general development plan um that will be up to the community to decide if they would like a fenced in park or not well that's uh maybe that's not will be not a good idea but uh in terms of the um um homeless the people are, are going to be walking around too on that on, on this park we know it's going to be it's going to be a, a lot of people like that on on the park we seen it on the on the um barrio logan i mean on the logan um uh, barrio logan uh, park under the bridges they're always out there and you know getting their uh encamping and all that and that comes with the, all the trust that is going to be around too um with that and it's going to be a little bit of uh trashy all around um the thing is that all this plan is going to be on uh on the cleaning and on all, all the uh all the stuff that it has to be done with it lighting and, and all that um along mm -hmm. with it and we got to be thinking that it's going to be families and children probably running around on all these uh all this street all this street so it's probably uh, to change the speed of uh, traffic on on this street along with the park. It's going to be something that we have to be thinking about too. And um, and the, the stop signs, whatever it is. And on the like, um, the other lady was talking about the entrance of the, to the freeway. It's going to be another issue too because uh, a lot of people rushing to the to get into the freeway. It's got to be. It's probably going to be needed at the stop sign right there too. So, or either um, divide the the road for left turn, and you know, so they can turn okay. on their way. Because there, there, there's many other things that I, they, when their traffic hits after the um, uh, this company, what's his name, um, uh, NASCO, it's, it's just they're going off of two thirty three o'clock in the afternoon, it's a lot of jam right there in that entrance. And, and so, along so with the park. Pablo, yeah. let, me ask, let me ask you this. Do you feel like there should be a park there? If you can solve all these problems, do you like the idea of a park in that location? That is a wonderful idea to have a Good. park in okay. that area. It's right. just the, but I think it's the, there's the thing is that it's a lot of stuff in the uh, Boston street. Right, mm -hmm. okay. All right, I think Jonathan heard all that. Thank you very much, Pablo. Um, anybody you, else? Liz, you see anybody else? Yes, um, I just unmuted someone. Oh, David. Yes, hi, Mark, can you hear me? Committee I can, committee? David, how are you all doing? Right, wonderful. Good evening, everybody. The uh, uh, I just checked in with Captain Iswadomi, so, uh, we, the Navy wanted to provide a couple of comments. The Navy is also supportive of the park at Boston Avenue. Barrio Logan uh, doesn't have enough park space for the community. And as the community grows, uh, parkland needs to increase to um, possibly impact the community. Uh, regarding the Boston Avenue Linear Park, uh, Mark directly and a couple other committee members mentioned the need for uh, noise pollution reduction uh, through uh, environmental infrastructure improvements, i.e., I think you mentioned uh, some type of a, uh, a wall of greenery that would help reduce the noise, but then also help improve the air quality. Uh, another member mentioned uh, safety and lighting. I think that's important. I want to note that as well. And then also parking for the community as well. Uh, that's very important to, that we balance that. Uh, Another area for innovation, because I know Barrio Logan has a challenge with stormwater, stormwater and utilities. So this, if there's an opportunity as we improve the park or add the park, if we can improve the stormwater management in the area to reduce flooding in the community, that would be a positive enhancement and would help with quality of life. In regards to the Choice Creek Park or trail, 
Uh, the Navy's supportive of the trail. And I think a lot of the community members mentioned park versus trail, and it'll be a process. But I do know that out of sight, out of mind, um, if there's adequate lighting both in Boston Avenue Park and also that Choyas Creek Trail, which could connect to the parkway, it could help deter uh, homeless in that area. And we are sensitive and aware of the homeless challenges as well. But then it could be an opportunity again to help mitigate the stormwater uh, issues in that area. And then final, finally within the Perkins Elementary School area and that Battery Park uh, opportunity, I would just share with the collective group, it, when we review design plan, it's always an opportunity for innovation. And uh, what we do, we don't have a lot of linear space, but we do have some vertical space that we can play with. And the infrastructure that we're planning to put in place to help the community as it grows, uh, it's a long-term investment. So much like the uh, San Diego, or excuse me, University of San Diego has a soccer field on top of a, par uh, a parking structure. Uh, as we look at maybe uh, building parking or some type of use under, under a grade, there's an opportunity to satisfy the community's challenge for parking and recreation and green space. So let's think about vertical in all ways. And final note, as we potentially improve Harbor Drive, and we're going to have an, a briefing on that later, uh, again, Barrio Logan uh, needs, needs some solutions with stormwaters stormwater enhancement. So it's always an opportunity as we improve, um, or it's an always opportunity to consider as we make improvements to help uh, help with the parking and then also help with the stormwater and then use the vertical space wisely. So I just wanted to provide those couple comments and just uh, share the community concerns there with the lighting the signage and the traffic, and then end with the base is doing everything it, it can to uh, support transportation demand management and San Diego I commute. Uh, I was happy to note in watching the uh, trolley that there were numerous sailors using the trolley to go from their place of duty at Navy Base San Diego to the shipyards, but we have more work to do. That's my last soundbite. Thank you very much for allowing me to speak tonight. Hey, Dave, um, thank you very much for that. Um, this is, uh, I'm just gonna throw this on the table. Um, a lot of the parking is created by, by, your, by your sailors and a lot of them because they have to stay with the ships up at Continental Marine and places like that up, up north of the base. Is there any chance that the Navy would join with the uh, school district on, on uh, uh, building some parking underneath that, uh, that playground area and the, the um, the fields that you're talking about on the west side of Maine? You can't answer that, I realize, but, but at this time, but I think, I think that would be, uh, that'd be kind of an interesting, uh, an interesting thing. Mark, uh, if, if I can speak, um, and I, I know I've spoken with this with Captain Iswadomi, there's an opportunity for the community, neighboring military communities to submit grants. And uh, Jonathan and Michael, it, it's, been renamed, but it was the Office of Economic Adjustment for Defense Communities. And being so that in, it's a pilot program that started last year and it had $50 million of funding and it has been increased and funded, I believe for this upcoming year. So uh, Sandag has a military, uh, excuse me, a, a resiliency grant that was funded this year uh, to look at uh, sea level rise and environmental impacts, but Mark directly, yes, that's an opportunity for the community uh, to apply for the grant. Uh, and I can provide that information uh, to you in the community planning group so that you can pursue that. All that's required from the Navy's perspective is that uh, Camp Niswadomi uh, or the CEO of Navy Base San Diego provides a memorandum stating we're aware and it doesn't have an encroachment and it would support uh, the neighboring community. That's great news. That's, I'm really glad. Uh, I'm glad I asked and I'm glad you I mentioned that. So please do send, us, send it to us and I suggest you also send it to Jonathan and Michael. 
Yes. Yeah, we can we can follow up with Dave to get the information and evaluate it further. I think this would be a great a great way for the community and the Navy to come together and solve that problem uh, in that end of town. It would be uh, it would be terrific. Hey, Mark, I, I kind of want to bring this up again too because we've chatted about it before, and I, I forget who I'm just having a senior moment. Who our previous Michael Prince was before um, uh, she, with the city of the gal she was working with us. Um, I think I just, you're looking at her. I think it's Elizabeth. Is it Elizabeth? <laughs> is so that's to me. <laughs> was that so? Was that you that sent the city for that stretch of national to the residents? And if they didn't respond, you're going to help me get the angled parking on national. Do you remember that? No, I I believe so, you might be referring to Lara Gates. That was pretty my time. I think. Okay, so mm -hmm. there's there. I mean, pretty much the entire stretch of Logan National and some other streets in Barrio Logan are very wide streets with huge turning lanes that you could you could turn into angled parking and increase the parking substantially. Right. And it could also, go ahead. De De Dennis, right now we're trying to talk about recreation facilities. What I would like you to oh, do- I thought you were talking about parking, sorry. What I would like you to do though, this would, this would be, I think, part of the, development of the plan. Am I right, Michael? Estoy en lo cierto, Michael? Yeah, so um, sí. this particular component could este be a, sub, a request submitted to traffic engineering operations, es, but I think as we're evaluating the larger mobility network and some of the stuff that Christine talked about in December, Christine Mercado, our mobility engineer, Mercado, we can follow up uh, at the February meeting. Sorry, yeah, I, I don't know. Michael, Michael would, would you just send a Michael. message to, I'm sorry, Dennis, would you send a message to Michael and and, and suggest that so we can, because that'll go into a different section in the community plan. Correct. I, and we can coordinate and follow up on that. Good. Sounds good. Sorry, I was I was using the translation services, which I think you guys should definitely take advantage of. Listening to her speak in Spanish is way better than listen to you speak in English, Mark. I, it's a whole lot better. <laughs> I realize that. Yeah, we should get a French interpreter as well, an Italian. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, anybody else from the public like to speak to the your recreation element? Uh, yes, um, this is Jose Marquez. Um, is this Jose Marquez? Uh, I'm hearing the trans the interpreter. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, okay, but um, this is Jose Marquez. I work for, for Caltrans for in the planning division. Uh, and um, I just have a question for the city of San Diego. If they uh, have reached out to to SANDAC, the San Diego Association of Governments regarding the, the, the development of the comprehensive plans for the South Bay to Sorrento. This plan is gonna look at improvements on I-5 and 805. And um, the, this plan is just in the initial stages. And um, one of the things that uh, um, is of concern of, for the Department for Caltrans and, and other agencies is that, that we don't um, uh, propose different uh, solutions to address different issues, but uh, that uh, that maybe they have to be addressed at the comprehensive plan, and and this comprehensive plan might have some um, different proposals that may contradict what the what the city of San Diego is proposing through the, through this um, through the update of the community plan. So I don't know if if you have reached out to SANDAC uh, regarding the, the, the update of the comprehensive plan. Yes, so I can respond to that. Uh, we have been, we are in regular uh, communication and coordination, not only with SANDAG, but uh, with the port and uh, the Navy as well. Um, and we've reviewed both the proposed recommendations related to Barrio Logan that have been discussed with the community and how they relate to existing and planned recommendations and policies uh, that other jurisdictions are bringing forward or have already adopted. So that collaboration and coordination is ongoing uh, and we continue to do so um, and we'll continue to do so as we refine our concepts related not only to uh, public spaces, but mobility uh, and land use through this effort. So, and I do want to be especially complimentary and thankful to um, Dave because he was really helpful and has been um, with the Navy in our coordination efforts related to um, uh, access to and from Main Street and, and nearby, and then also uh, port staff and Larry uh, in terms of coordination with them as well. Um, so again, thank you to everybody who's uh, assisted me and, and our team on that. Okay. 
Well, thank you. Um, anybody else? Who's next? Uh, Chair, I have a few comments from the uh, residents whenever um, the public's done. That's up to you. That's now. So go for it, Phil Manor. Awesome. I uh, just wanted to, uh, on behalf of Katie, uh, she wanted to add and clarify that Katie Pipes, uh, she's resident at South 32nd in Boston. She wanted to clarify that she was referring to street lights uh, to light the whole entire Boston Avenue and South 32nd okay. and adjacent right. cross streets and, and not traffic lights. Um, Thank you. Also, um, um, Pablo Espinosa is a part of me. <laughs> Pablo, sorry for changing your last name. Castaneda, resident at uh, South 32nd, I mean, South uh, 30th in Boston, is um, uh, a wish list is that there would be a ch child's uh, secure, private, fenced um, playground for children and also little pets. Um, again, safety for fencing uh, for freeway access is so adjacent to freeway and also keeping them safe from transient uh, uh, use that constantly traffic the area because of the recycling facilities. A comment from uh, Oribe family um, that are residents uh, adjacent to 29th and Boston. They also want more lights. Um, uh, for this whole uh, park initiative, uh, safety uh, for uh, protection from transient non-residents, uh, parking, residential parking for both sides. Uh, what else? Hold on, I'm reading comments. Uh, they, uh, her, um, the, they also have a, their property has um, it's uh, permitted and currently have two homes on the property and one of the properties is currently rented by um, sailors that walk to the base and she's also concerned about their safety, especially at night um, and not to mention the residents, especially uh, the seniors because she currently has two seniors in her household herself. Uh, other comment from Rodriguez family. Uh, if all possible, if this park initiative could divert 100% the, the big rigs from entering uh, the I-5 right out there on 29th in Boston, if they can divert them um, to Harbor Drive and to use the um, truck uh, ordinance. Let's see here. Da -da -da. More light, as she mentioned, lighting. Okay, then comments from Martinez. Um, reduce... Uh, Let's see here. Oh, street calming measures um, at the both sides of at every entrance of going leading into Boston Avenue to reduce the speeding. This, if this could be part of the park initiative, um, and then uh, dual side on both north and the south side, make it 100% residential parking. Um, then comment from Chavez family. Uh, that's uh, where she. Uh, 31st in Boston, uh, same thing, safety. She is uh, excited about a walking, um, circular walking path and uh, she doesn't jog, so it's a walking path. And, um, but she, that definitely open to that. But again, safety because it's so close to the freeway and concern about transients, um, uh, which is, is a problem that we already have. Uh, and she's saying, don't forget to mention, <laughs> we've had it eight years, eight years since SA Recycling moved in. Um, comment from Duenas family, uh, which is on South 32nd across from SA Recycling. Um, they want me to say thank you uh, to the Navy for the street cleanup that they have been doing on South 32nd and Boston Avenue. So uh, shout out to, I know, Dave, if you can please uh, thank the captain uh, for continuing to do that. Uh, and that, and I'm speaking on, on behalf of Duenas and the rest of us that are on Boston Avenue, Fuentes, Duenas, Espinosa, Pipes, Chavez, Marino, Castaneda, Martinez, Rodriguez, and a whole bunch of others. But these are the ones that are currently online. 
Um, and then the last uh, comment is, uh, oh, <laughs> let's see here. Uh, Espinosa is in agreement with the comments made by Navy um, and family, uh, oh, sorry, Avalos family just joined in, sorry. And let me finish with uh, Espinosa. They're saying that they're in agreement with the comments made by Navy um, and, and I know they mean Dave, they said something else, <laughs> to reduce uh, the noise barriers and again, straight calming measures, uh, safety in the lighting, parking, and they definitely don't want it to be an active park, but more of what's proposed by um, joining Choice uh, Park with the bike link, with the bike route, bike trail, uh, what else? Uh, walking trail and also ADA accessible um, for the bridge that's on 30th and uh, Boston. And then the last comment I have is from Avalos family. Uh, they definitely, they're strongly saying get rid of SA recycling and replace that with a park um, so that they can implement the idea from um, that. Um, um, as far as turning that into a green space and the bike, uh, 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 what is the comment? I'm sorry, I'm trying to read this. Um, the proposal made by the biking committee uh, and the Choice Creek committee. Okay, and that's about it. I, um, I don't- Philomena, Philomena do, do, do all these folks actually, are they in favor of the park being there? Uh, the linear park, yes. Um, I sure. they know that this is a discovery at this moment. Uh, I shared with the, uh, many of them as far as the, the proposal from Choice Creek Committee. And um, then to, I invited them today to join in because Jonathan was going to be presenting and it was a fact finding and gathering. So um, they wanted just to voice that and definitely uh, want to be active in, and, and counted in. Um, um, counted in, uh, in and take in consideration what's going to be developed and what's being planned in Boston. Um, we understand that uh, because of the COVID, um, a face-to-face -face might not be uh, possible, but a, a Zoom meeting or um, a more safe and secure way of communicating with the neighbors and getting their feedback. So, so far right now, I was able to express... 11, oh no, 12, including the, um, the last neighbor that joined Espinosa family, 12 residents of Boston Avenue. Good, okay, thanks. But, but there's uh, not nobody, including no, nobody all of the Marinos. <laughs> no, nobody there that's against the park, right? Nobody. Okay. Correct, correct, Good. yes. Okay. Um, they're just not in favor of an active park that's going to bring non-residents into the area and um, by that, I mean primarily transients and um, um, reduce the parking because uh, they have this by experience in the park that specifically um, that was developed for access to the bay, which is, um, Julie, please chime in. I forget the name of the park, not Cesar Chavez Park. Right. Not the Chicano okay. Park, but the Cesar Chavez, that none of us can use it because the parking is always used by, you know, non-park users. Right. See, okay. Mark, I think there. everybody agrees that the park is a great idea, but it's just great. We're going to be here till midnight. Right. Um, who else? Is there anybody else? Yes, there's one more. Pablo Castaneda. Yes. Um, I'd like to just... Uh, they know about much about the uh, the concept that it was going to be just uh, by being agreed with the park being at the on the Boston Street, but I was thinking something else. So that's what I come out with all these ideas. But this is going to be just one last question: Is this being approved to be a park, or is just the beginning? Like it's going to propose a proposal. So we're we're at the beginning phases of the park. the The land is currently um, part of Caltrans uh, portfolio, so it's Caltrans right away. Um, I don't know, Michael, if you have any more info on that. 
Yeah, no, the, the city does not control the Boston Avenue linear park land. Um, it is controlled currently by Caltrans. Uh, so any what, what we're looking at is sort of future consideration. It's long been identified and there would be a process um, to go through where the city would eventually take control of the land. We're working with Caltrans at the moment, um, staff with the city and Caltrans to sort of identify the parameters. What we're looking to do as part of our effort and sort of what Jonathan's presenting tonight or big picture, do we want it to be sort of more of an active space or a passive space? And I think we've gotten a good amount of discussion and consideration as to how that should be, uh, how we should consider that. Uh, from there, that information we would then sort of take to Jonathan would work a little bit further, you know, in the implementation efforts. And we in the in the community plan will also sort of identify high level policy direction for that implementation. And also, you know, sort of looking at connections for mobility and adjacency to residential um, uh, and other components. So. All right. I, see okay, well, I don't think. The thing is, what? I'm sorry. It was just a question that they answered my question, but the thing is that I, what I really want to know is if it's uh, something that is going on or it's going to be, or it's going to be trying, or, or you guys are trying to be, make this possible, or I don't know. Jonathan, maybe, 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 maybe it's helpful if you go through the whole process, you know, it goes into the CIP and it, you know, et cetera, et cetera. Do, do you want me to go over the whole process, Mark? I think I don't think there's a lot of understanding about how these folks are going to be able to participate sure. in the park design later. So, if you could do it in, very quickly, I think. Yeah. Sure. Um, so currently, right now, we are talking in broad terms about what the park programming will be once we agree and it, it is added to the the community plan. Um, we will then find funding to develop the design of the park. Um, that that process is called the general development plan process. During that process, um, we will go out to the nearest community recreation group and we will hold a series of workshop meetings similar to this, but mainly focused on the park where we will present, we will get community input as to what you would like to see at the park, be it a walking trail, basketball court, playground, dog park, uh, skate park, basically what you would like to see um, based on the budget and what the community input we get is the set the next meeting will we will be presenting designs alternatives and then in a third meeting we will vote on the final concept after the concept is agreed it will go into the construction document process and then to the CIP process and be built uh, that whole process takes uh, I would say probably around four years or less, three years or so. Um, it's a lengthy process, but we want to make sure that we hear all citizens and residents and make sure that all needs are met as much as possible. So this is the very first step, which is to call it out as a park possibility mm -hmm. or park and the community plan. And then from there, it starts in this process and there'll be all these other opportunities for people to speak to the details of the park, correct? That's correct. That's correct. And then there's also an implementation component in which we would seek funding either, again, through city funds, through our capital improvements program, or through grant opportunities uh, and sort of other, you know, funding opportunities to, okay. to actually to, to build the park specifically. And, and I would just refer everybody to council policy 600-33. It lays out the process, but you can also look up the consultant's guide to park design in the city of San Diego. And it also lines out how that process would, would work and how we receive input. That's very helpful. I think I hope, I hope everybody then got, got the sense that there is a process that, that incorporates all of these ideas and all of your, your folks, but we just aren't there yet. This is just the first step. Correct. Okay, this just in the, the first, beginning. This is the first meeting about this uh, park, then. Yes. Oh, okay. All right. So I don't know. Uh, is there anybody else, Liz, on the list that's trying to get into to speak? Yes, David and Julie again. Okay. And Mark, I think you can hear me. Can you? Yes. Okay. I just wanted to uh, wrap up in in I, what I heard from the community, and I may I don't think I mentioned this before because I mentioned Harbor Drive, but 
our goals, our shared goals with the port and the city and the community with the, the city hall road. And uh, I, what I heard is that there's a nexus between that on off ramp potentially uh, and Caltrans and the I-5. And if there's again, a note for innovation uh, and pollution reduction ideas uh, in and around that area uh, in regards to truck traffic entering and or exiting the community in a safer in a safe via a safer men, venue that would be something important to note because I know it right now the location of the uh, on ramp is a little bit more in the community but maybe sometime in the future it might be placed somewhere else who knows but that's another thing to consider because obviously we want trucks to move out and away from that community. Um, but just wanted to note that because there's a nexus between the park being Caltrans right away, what Caltrans is trying to do with pollution reduction, what the, what the city's trying to do and what the community would like to have done and also what the Navy is supportive as well. That's all. Great, thanks Dave. Hey guys, Julie again. I just wanted to drop in one last comment um, to David's point. Um, the port is looking at that. The Harbor Drive uh, uh, was a multimodal corridor study proposes uh, moving the on ramp from Boston out to 28th, which um, I think all of us, a lot of us are supportive of. Um, but just to say that, uh, as the city is now obviously very aware, the community has a lot of concerns around the park being um, built the way that, that that benefits them and that protects them. Um, but, but we're very supportive of this being um, included in the CPU as possible park space um, with the understanding that it'll all need to be ironed out. Great, Thanks, thank you, Julie. Okay, if there are no others, are there, are there any others? No? I suggest, Michael, I hand it back to you. I think, I think we've given you information, which is what you asked for, you and Jonathan. I'm sorry, Mark, there's one more, Blake. Sanuga? Correct, okay. yes. Uh, I'm not sure if you guys can hear me, but um, I'm trying to find out who the last speaker is. Um, I'm not sure if they are with the Navy or... Um, Julie Corrales is the last speaker. She's with the Environmental Health Coalition. Um, I think it was Dave or David. Dave, Dave, Dave Zajac, Zajac is, is yeah. with the Navy. He's with the Navy. I'm sorry, What what's the last name? Zajac. Z-A-J-A-C. Oh yeah, sorry, thanks Mark. All right, thank you very much. You're welcome. Okay, onward and upward. Um, Michael. Jonathan, do you, any closing thoughts or comments? Or if not, I can go ahead and go straight into mine. Uh, no, um, I think I've heard a lot today and I have a lot to, to chew on. Um, so I'm looking forward to incorporating these comments into the, the parks or into the recreation element. So thank you for coming out and giving me a lot of information. Thank you. Thank you, Jonathan, I appreciate it. Okay, Michael, back to you. All right, can everybody see my, uh, this, the screen with my presentation? Yes. Uh, yes. All right. Um, so good evening, everyone, Michael Prince. Uh, I wanted to, to discuss the draft land use and zoning. Um, so what I wanna present tonight is a very brief recap of what we've previously discussed, um, uh, presenting the draft land use and zoning map, uh, getting into just a little bit of the details. Uh, then I wanna allow for some public comment uh, on the proposed land uses. If the group wants to take an action tonight, we'll certainly take that as a consideration and recommendation to move forward. If not, we can certainly come back and discuss further at the February meeting, uh, but it is uh, listed as a potential action item. Uh, finally, just outlining the schedule and next steps sort of in this effort. So uh, as you, most of you are probably aware, uh, at previous meetings in November, the planning group voted to recommend um, uh, land use is consistent with, with the MOU framework. So, and we'll go through those in a second. Additionally, in the December meeting, um, while the MOU identified land uses and uses that would be allowed and prohibited within the MOU area, uh, what was not identified or discussed was the allowed residential densities. So we had a couple of meetings where we discussed opportunities and options for residential densities and the group voted at the December meeting to provide direction as to, to, um, to staff to evaluate residential densities consistent with the 2013 plan. Uh, 
And so tonight I'm just gonna present that information in a PowerPoint and then uh, additional detail will be posted to, um, to our website, the planbario.org tomorrow. So just a little bit of a background on land use and zoning. Uh, the land use provides regulations, the zone, the, excuse me, the land use and zoning provide regulations for controlling a building's bulk and scale the orientation of a building, uh, as well as density, allowing for the amount of residential development that could be um, built on a, on a property, usually measured in dwelling units per acre. Currently, the plan allows for a mix of residential, commercial, and industrial uses within the agreement area, the MOU area that we refer to as, and all of the area that's outlined here in purple and yellow allows up to 29 dwelling units per acre today. That's what the current adopted plan allows for. Um, what the 2019 plan by and large allowed for 29 dwelling units per acre within this area as well um, for the areas that would allow for residential. So what is being proposed? What we heard from the community was to take forward the land uses outlined in the uh, MOU. So for the area between Maine uh, and Harbor, identify a maritime commercial land use designation. From Maine to the alley, identify a community commercial land use designation. And then from the alley to Newton, and then over along on Main Street as you move further east, identify as neighborhood commercial, and then the Boston Avenue residential area. So what we've proposed to do, as you can see on the slide, is to provide a citywide zone, meaning that we would remove the current plan district ordinance that applies to Barrio Logan, and we would establish a zoning that is, that is used sort of citywide. In this instance, we would have uh, office commercial zoning, community commercial zoning, and neighborhood commercial zoning for those areas. The other thing that we're proposing to do is what's called a community plan implementation overlay zone to really outline and identify um, uses that are tailored to this area that would be allowed or prohibited based on the uses outlined in the MOU. So as some of you will recall, the MOU that was reached um, and, and discussed and recommended uh, earlier this year between the planning group, the Environmental Health Coalition, and representatives of the shipbuilding and ship repair industry outlined roughly 60 uses that would be prohibited within that roughly 65 acre area that was shown on the previous map. Some of those uses have very sort of distinct and understandable categories, or um, I should say, um, categories that are um, analogous and are directly related to categories within our current municipal code for use. Some of them, it requires a form of interpretation. And so what we did was our staff evaluated and analyzed those uses within the MOU and compared them to the uses within the land development code for each of the zones. And we prepared a matrix that will be posted onto the website uh, um, later this week. In evaluating that, we basically came up with the, the uh, citywide zone that really represents sort of the best mix of uses that would not only implement the land use designation, but would uh, allow for uses that are consistent with that designation and then prohibit those uses which the MOU looks to prohibit. Where there was some overlap, we would provide a more detailed guidance and clarity there to prohibit some additional uses. Big picture, what we were proposing to do is to prohibit residential and prohibit industrial in the maritime commercial and the community commercial designation, and also prohibit other sensitive receptor type uses. So childcare facilities, nursing facilities, uh, homeless facilities, um, those things would be prohibited in those zones. Additionally, any industrial uses or uses that require an uh, air pollution control district permit or a hazardous materials permit those would also be prohibited through the overlay zone that would be identified. This is just sort of a slide showing that how the regulations will look in the draft community plan so that once a project comes in, they will have to review that the, the development services department staff will review the list of uses that would be prohibited and ensure that, that a property owner who is proposing a development does not come in with a use uh, that would um, that is prohibited in a specific area. So in looking at the, um, the maritime commercial area, again, between Harbor and Main Street, what we're proposing is the commercial office zone. 
This zone provides for areas that would allow for employment uses with some limited retail. The focus is on office uses with a neighborhood orientation and the zone does not allow for industrial and it also does not allow for residential. In addition to that, the overlay zone that we've identified here would prohibit an additional list of 17 uses. Um, again, these include hotels and motels, um, childcare facilities, uh, eating and drinking establishments with the drive-through um, and building services, uh, just to name a few that were outlined in the MOU. Uh, the community commercial designation, here we're proposing the community commercial, the CC24 zone. What we're proposing here is to provide for community serving commercial services and retail uses that would have a moderate intensity and scale, uh, small to medium scale. It's really intended that these commercial uses are pedestrian friendly and serve sort of the broader community within roughly three to six miles. Again, here, this use includes would prohibit residential and would also prohibit industrial. And similar to the office commercial uh, zone, the community commercial would prohibit other types of sensitive receptor uses and uses that would require a hazardous materials or APCD permit. Moving through to the neighborhood commercial designation, this is the area that would allow for residential. And as you recall at the December meeting, the group recommended that uh, a density of up to 29, 29 dwelling units per acre, which is what's currently allowed at today and which was recommended as part of the 2019 plan, uh, that would be allowed through a mixed use uh, zone where you have ground floor commercial and residential above. One of the comments that we received from the group and what the overall group recommendation was is to allow for areas where you could have some ground floor residential or sort of residential only projects. So the draft CPAS would address that by allowing ground floor residential within this area. The commercial types of uses would be again, smaller scale, lower intensity development consistent with the character of the surrounding areas. And that's really the intent of the zone that's being proposed uh, and, and the zone that's, that is applied here. Uh, the density would be consistent with the plan and the other uses that uh, in terms of industrial uses and uses which require a hazardous material permit would, um, would be prohibited uh, as part of this effort. Finally, um, the, the proposed zone here to implement the residential medium low designation uh, identified here would be the small lot residential zone, the RX12. This provides for both attached and detached single dwelling units on smaller lots. It was the zone that was approved as part of the 2013 plan, but was ultimately rescinded. And again, here, this would allow up to 14 dwelling units per acre, and it's consistent not only with the 2013 draft, but with the recommendation that was uh, brought forward by the group at the December meeting and what we've discussed previously. The only thing that I wanted to sort of bring up as a consideration for reevaluation by the group tonight, um, in addition to sort of evaluating the existing zones, is really looking at the recycling yard. Um, here we would apply the neighborhood commercial designation and, um, and the similar um, zone here. And I know that the group recommended 29 dwelling units per acre, but we have seen a lot of support for a potential new use in the future should the property owner choose to not want to continue the recycling yard at some date in the future. Given that that's, that's the case and to really sort of um, promote this area and the potential for it to potentially change to a use consistent with the MOU, you know, our recommendation to the group is to at least consider or discuss the opportunity for allowing a higher density development on this site. We don't necessarily need to rezone it to a higher um, to a higher zone. It could just be a policy in the plan, which then we would then analyze and it would have to come back through a further discretionary review for the group to evaluate. But I wanted to at least bring that forward as a, as a discussion point and a recommendation for the group to consider. Allowing a higher density could make the site more attractive for more residential and would allow for more uh, potential for public space on the site and a connection to the creek. So I just offer that up as a consideration for the, for the board tonight as we move forward. So that really sort of wraps up my comments on this uh, and I'll sort of stop there. I'll stop sharing my screen and I can pull something back up if we need to, to um, get into the conversation. And again, I thank everybody for uh, sticking with us and for giving us all of your time and input. Um, Michael, thank you very much. I, I think that, I think what you proposed with SA, with the recycling yard is something 
I hadn't really considered, but I think it's actually a good idea. I think with the, the kind of the kind of designation you're talking about, there's a possibility of uh, maybe a you know a development that's got the same scale. I mean, maybe not the same uses, but as a Mercado, you know, it's a buildings like that. It's a little more like it's a whole kind of a a plan area that's that's a little got kind of a little different character to it. Um, I think it's something to consider. I, I think I think it could be also an encouragement and sort of an incentive for reusing that property. Um, anyway, let's open it up. Who uh, who would like to throw some ideas? And I know that uh, I know Dave Duay has got some distinct ideas. Where is he? Where's Dave? Are Dave are you still with us? Apparently not. Okay. I do know that, yeah, I mean, obviously Dave has voiced his um, his comment on this and he sent an email to me uh, requesting sort of the, the list of or basically understanding what would be allowed. So um, if he is not here tonight, I would just sort of echo on his behalf that he has recommended uh, that, that a residential be allowed on his portion of the lot. As I told him in my conversation that the group has already voted to recommend that the area just be allowed for commercial only. I should, I should back up and say that what we're talking about right now is the 2100 block of Main Street, which is designated as community commercial. And that staff's recommendation at this point is to follow what was outlined by not only in the MOU, but what was voted on by a majority of the group to not allow residential on that particular site. I'm, um, I'm and here. So this, yeah. And I'm, the zoning I'm reflects that. Uh, yeah, and I, so just to be clear, Dave, Dave is talking about uh, what's essentially north of Samson. On Maine. Go ahead, yeah. Dave. Oh yeah, I'm I'm still uh, trying to get housing allowed with work below and housing above, particularly on that one block because we're bound by housing to the south and a school to the north, and close to the bus, close to the trolley, everything the city wants. And if we could just get an amendment. Whoops. Okay. All right. Um, while Dave reconnects, uh, uh, who else would like to who else would like to make comments? Um, um, it's me, Pablo. Can yeah, pa me Pablo. Can we? I, I'd like to limit it to the board for the moment, um, and then we'll come to you. So we will not forget you. Okay. Um, who's Who's out there? Matt, Dennis. Philomena, Klaus, who's got a thought? Um, I, I like the idea of changing that that use there, just because it's it's such a such an eyesore right now, and you know if we can somehow, you know, uh, you're talking about the the recycling yard, right? Recycling, yeah, yeah. If we can get that that guy out of there and, and change that use to residential, that that'd be that'd be phenomenal. Because I mean. Not just that, we've got to consider the runoff that goes from that side in, into the into the creek. You know, it's I know that's not the main source of contamination for that creek, but you know, it, it would help reduce it. Okay. Anybody else? Okay. Well, Mark, what about <laughs> Mark, would it be possible to delay this till February because there's a draft plan? coming out from Michael tomorrow, he said. And uh, I've talked to a lot of people in the community that have no knowledge of what's going on. They haven't attended the meetings and there's no public meeting now. We have it do it on Zoom. And if we could possibly uh, wait for the vote till February, I think it would be in the best interest. And right now there's so much upheaval that I just am I'm scared. Right, I understand. Um, I don't agree with that, but I but I like I'm happy to see what everybody else has to say. Um, but I'm not getting a lot of um, not a lot getting a lot of participation. Anybody out there, uh, Matt or Tom? I'm sorry, anybody Mark, wanna, I'm trying wanna to read dive in with from some the thoughts neighbors, about so... this? Hey? Yeah. Um, What's this your... is Philomena. I'm just trying to read the comments from the, the residents regarding the statement re uh, as far as SR recycling. So I'll be back on in a minute. Yeah. 
Yeah, this, this is Dennis. I, I, I definitely think uh, another use besides the recycling plant makes sense for the community. It, okay. it seems like it's a uh, uh, common complaint. So all for the, the residential use. Dennis, what about, uh, what about the density? Increasing the density to increase the density so that it, it's more attractive and more valuable for him to sell and get out of recycling. That's kind of the thought there, or just just overall it's, making it's, it a more it be, more developed site like the Mercado, like you said. Yeah, it might be a it might be a result of it. I mean, I think if you both took the next density. Up. But what about what about the other densities? Not just, let's let's talk about all these properties that Michael has has uh, presented, not just that one, but all the rest of them. Increasing the densities. Well, actually, what we talked about last time was keeping the densities at the level they are in the 78 plan, right? Am I right, Michael? Yeah, it wasn't just the 78 plan. It was also the, the 2013 plan for these I'm areas. Sorry. That's so, what I mean to say. Yeah, it's not the 78 plan. It's the 2013. I'm yeah, yeah I, thought, I thought we went through all those and we were all pretty much in agreement uh, as far as the densities. We did, yeah. So the group did vote on that. It's just that you know, I, the only reconsideration for the, the essay recycling yard was given that, you know, there's, there is a strong desire amongst the community to see that um, perhaps change in the future. Um, you know, we would recommend a, a village type, you know, density, again, similar to something that you would see like in the Mercado, um, you know, apartments in terms of that level of density. Uh, and so that's why we're just bringing it back for consideration. Can, can we get rid of the, the, the recycling plant? I think everybody's for it. Yeah. Can we Sounds can like we put it. a stipulation in there? Because like, if, if let's let's say we agree to uh, change the density on that, but only with the uh, uh, the in a, with the agreement that it it that the development would be um, affordable housing and not uh, market rate. So, I mean, you know, it's up to the group to decide how you want to craft the motion and we will take that into consideration. The only thing that I would say about, uh, about that is, is that in terms of how city staff and the planning department currently drafts land use policies uh, and community plan policies is that we um, have our affordable housing regulations we evaluate on a citywide basis uh, and that the we typically do not as staff uh, craft site specific recommendations for affordable housing. We do have the complete communities program that does allow for um, additional affordable housing as a requirement, um, and then the additional uh, affordable housing regulations that apply citywide uh, would also apply here as well. You can you ultimately it's the group's decision to to craft the motion, but that's just the the current. Um, process that we undertake in terms of addressing affordable housing. So, so Michael, if, if, if I understand what you're asking of us tonight, um, we, we, had, we had agreed with the 2013 land uses and densities. You've come back tonight with more specific actual zoning designations that, that then implement those land uses and densities. Correct. Um, and, with the, and then the, the only new piece of information would be about the recycling yard. Correct. It would just be the essay recycling yard in which we would come back and then present a different zone for that at the February meeting, you know, as part of the full package. Uh, and, and, you know, but, but I wanted to bring that forward and just reiterate that discussion tonight. Um, okay. Got it. Um, does anybody else on the board have a comment or a thought about it? Um, Tom? Um, I'm getting asked questions with regards to density, how much uh, you're mentioning uh, something, an example, their, their neighbors right now are asking, they're, you're mentioning Mercado, but are you referring to the Mercado apartments or Northgate, um, that area where there's uh, kind of like a shopping it's, or Northgate? Yeah, uh, yeah. Philomena, it's, it's not that specific. It's, it's just the idea that it would be like a planned, you know, like a, a, a special place. It could be, mm -hmm. it could have be like Northgate or it could be, I think it's more about the residential though. I think, I think if you're just thinking about the, uh, uh, you know, about, about the, about the Mercado Estrella, Estrella, Estrella um, mm -hmm. you know, the residential, I think that's really more what it would be about, but I see. Mm -hmm. it, it's not to say that it's going to be specifically that, you, you understand what I mean? It's like, 
It's just saying right. it would be it would be a little higher density than normal. I got a I got a question. Is there a way to um, put a an end date on that density increase so that it actually motivates him to get rid of it? It doesn't just reward him indefinitely and give him a a more valuable property. Can you say, hey, we we'll give you this double density bonus, but you gotta, you gotta, you gotta use it in the next three years. You gotta have a plan in a certain amount of time. Is that no, possible? we we would not. Uh, the the rezone would not come with conditions as part of the community plan update. And then just to answer Philomena's comment, also is, is that yeah, I mean, and to Mark's point, you know, we would identify sort of a density in the community plan, and there's certainly various mechanisms we could apply in terms of. Uh, ensuring that there's community view, review through that process. Uh, but it would, you know, in this instance in the discussion, it would be sort of a density that is sort of similar to like the Mercado apartments. It would have a look and feel that is closer to that than to some of the residential that you see um, along Boston Avenue or uh, along Newton, um, sort of closer to the historic area of Barrio. Hey, Mark, this is Tom. Hey, Tom. Can you... You know, I, I apologize. I came in about 10 minutes late and I've been just listening, trying to catch up. Um, so are we changing the zoning, which impacts the recycling center? Is that the issue? Yes. And the owner of the property knows this. Are they present? Have they been in any of these discussions? I don't know if they're here tonight, but they have monitored all the other ones so far. Yeah. Correct. They've been, they've attended the meeting. I don't know if they are here tonight. And, um, and by the way, this is, we've had um, the, you know, we've, he's, he's been at, at these discussions and is aware of the recommendation, both from the MOU and, and in the line use plan. And, and what has been his general uh, mood or like, what are these meetings like? Is, is he receptacle? Is he, receptive to the idea of changing the that what, what's the intel on that so i don't have an indication as to what his um what he would do regardless of um you know and i i don't have an indication i apologize so okay no that's all right i just i just want to know you know obviously that's a, a, a significant change for that property owner and so how motivated is he to change or she um you know to change so right um but yeah, I and think I, I agree with the group that, you know, obviously housing and slightly density, you know, slightly more dense housing would be probably a really good idea. I, I think, that. And, I, I so, think the, real, the discussion here tonight is that the MOU really calls it out because residential, doesn't it? Correct. The MOU yeah. calls it out as neighborhood commercial, which would allow for residential and public spaces. And yeah. I think one of our discussions, sorry, just to add one more thing, Mark, I apologize. No, it's okay. Uh, um, one of the in in our discussions as staff and in looking at the site and in responding to a lot of the uh, community concerns related to that use and sort of what could be done in the future, um, our thought you know and our recommendation is to pursue a higher density. It could come in two forms. I'm getting a little bit technical here. I apologize, but I think it's worth sort of considering. Number one is we rezone the site, you know, and and we pursue a higher density. And option two is we could keep the zone as is, but in the policy document, in the land use plan, we just apply a designation that would say, allow for a higher residential density, and then require that they go through what's called a plan development permit process. Meaning that you just write it into the policy document that you can achieve a higher density um, so long as you meet certain design criteria or public space criteria. We've done this in other areas. It was done as part of the North Park Community Plan update, and it was also done as part of uh, the Marina Corridor specific plan. So this mechanism is not without precedent in other areas of the city and is an option. But I wanted oh, to at least have the, the conversation broadly to say is, is that is there an appetite amongst the group to at least consider this as an opportunity to, and perhaps in the future incentivize this um, area to be redeveloped. And then again, it's a separate area that's different from how we would handle the rest of the MOU in the 2013 plan. So I, okay, I, think I, have, just, I have one, just, one last question, Mark, if I can just ask. So by changing the land use there and changing it in our new plan, we are increasing the value of that land for that property owner. Well, values in the eye of the beholder, but I, th I would think we are, most people would say that. And so just to be clear, maybe to put a little more meat around this discussion, Tom, up to now, we have just talked about it being residential. We didn't talk about it being higher density than the rest. And so the discussion tonight is not to change the use from what was before. It's simply to say maybe we should encourage or allow 
a little bit higher density. I really like the description of the of the mechanism that, that Michael just put together because it also yeah. gives an opportunity for the community to be engaged in, in the process, uh, which I think is important in that area. And so just to, to answer your question, the, the landowner has been involved and has not objected to our previous discussions, which are to make which are to designate it as is neighborhood commercial, which would allow residential. So I don't think he's going to complain about it being simply added and maybe, okay, it's the same use as he's seen before. We're just adding to it a bit, a bit of density opportunity. And the only other thing I would add is, is that, you know, as we mentioned previously, and I know that most here who are in attendance are aware is this that the property owner would would main, continue to maintain and, and does have the right to previously conforming uses so even you know regardless of what zone is chosen and what land use if it's uh if it doesn't allow for a recycling yard going forward uh which appears to be the direction from the group and what we were proposing the property owner would have previously conforming rights to continue to operate that recycling yard as an allowed and permitted use um, so what we're doing is really just sort of looking into the future and trying to provide options for that area. So um, is, there, is there anybody here that, uh, is, is there anybody else have any, any more questions about yeah. what? <laughs> There's like two, two members from the public, should I open? So yeah, hang on. There's nobody from the board, I don't think, right? Okay, let's let's go to the public. Okay, well. Uh, hi guys, I'm Julie again. I'm just saying, thinking this through that I know Dennis talked about the the um, increasing of the density would allow. Density would allow would incentivize the owner to sell. Um, also throwing in there that um, that uh, development on that property, depending on on how um, community friendly the developer turns out to be, could squeeze in remediation of the creek, a possible maybe even build out of some park space. Um, but then you're balancing that with you know the gentrification aspect. So, anyways, just thoughts. Thanks, guys. Right. Thanks, Julie. Anybody on the list? Who's else? Who else is out there? Vicente. Vicente Marino. Hello. Good night. Yeah. Hi. Hi. I'm just uh, on the comment of Michael uh, talking about increasing the uh, density on the recycling part. Um, and Mark mentioning that, you know, similar to the Mercado, um, have you been to around those places now in the evenings or in the, during the daytime? You build, uh, you, once, you, once you increase the density without parking, it's a big problem. I can see that happening right next to our home. So if, if any increase without parking would be uh, a terrible idea. I would like to maintain it as a low density. I know we want to uh, improve the neighbor, but you know, you don't want to give up. Uh, you just, I'm just saying, just be careful of what we're wishing for. How, do you, how, would, how would you feel about it, Vicente, if, if, uh, if, we, if they were, if they, had, if they provided parking, if they were required to provide parking? I will re reconsider that, yes. I will feel better if uh, yeah, okay. all of that, all those details will be provided before we have any increase on density. Right. No, I, th I think that's what we're proposing, actually. That's what, that's the process that Michael had, had discussed would be one where there, there would be a lot of planning work and a lot of public involvement, I think, before before it settled down. Okay. okay. No, I, you. you're right about that. You can't you can't just put an isolated thing down there without parking. Okay. Okay. Thank you though. That's Anybody okay. else, Liz? Yes. Yeah, she Hong. Oh, yeah, I'm sorry if I'm Hello. Hi, good evening. Um, again, this is Yachi, um, Yachi Huang. I'm 
representing the Navy and talking to Captain Nishwa Nishwadami as well. Um, we are the Navy is supportive of uh, residential use. Um, I just want to put out some caution about raising the density since it's so close to a to the base, and we all know the traffic issues involved close that this close to the thirty second Street. So I want to note that caution, and I am supportive of. Mar uh, Michael's idea of having a further planned development review, and that's that's all. Thank you. Good. Good. Thank you, Yoshi. Thank you, Yoshi. Um, anybody else? Anybody um, feel up to making a motion? Um, no, right now. Uh, does this need to go up for motion? Uh, most of my neighbors are saying that. They're in agreement as far as they do want SA out, but they don't want to increase the density because then that's going to turn a small, quiet little neighborhood. We're, we're aiming in one direction, and then now you're 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 increasing, replacing something with something else, even though it's supposed to be in theory better. But as mentioned, the parking and um, the, the numbers. So we had agreed on the MU, MOU. That's what the neighbors had up to to now. Uh, been communicated in in detailed uh, thought painful staking meetings and and this is uh, last minute so we would at least like some more time to review this before it goes up for vote okay um mark there are two more members of the public who are raising their hands vicente marino and achita achita sorry okay right. vicente I, are you list, uh, Are you there? Yes. I'm sorry. I just. Uh, I'm gonna skip it. All right. I'm gonna hold on until I get more information. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Mark, this is Tina, and I totally agree with Philomena. Okay. Liz, is there anybody else? Yes, Akshita Siva Kumar. Uh, yeah, this, uh, this is just a really quick clarification. Um, given this high density housing, just uh, you know, as a as a proposal, uh, how does this sit with other recommendations to not build high uh, density residential so close to the highway? Um, are those has that been discussed in prior meetings that I've just missed? Uh, or how are those two being squared? Because I'd imagine some of this property is still within like 500 feet of the highway, no? So all of the regulations related to um, noise, traffic mm -hmm. analysis and um, air quality, um, you know, would be addressed through um, the development review process, uh, you know, if a specific project were to come in. Essentially, what we are responding to and uh, and seeking feedback on is again relating to if there is a strong desire to see the recycling yard, um, you know, ultimately move to a different location or be replaced with a different use. Uh, the uh, the recommendation is is that an increase in density would would be um, something that could help further that effort. Obviously, yeah, they're right. they're. So sorry. Yeah, no, no, no. I mean, I, I get that. I'm just uh, thinking of if we're also then uh, expecting like um, community members to give their input at this stage, you know, which is still pretty early on, then to be able to understand the realm of possibilities of what could go there. Uh, I know there is an understanding that it would be residential, but if we are talking about speculative projects, uh, what is keeping us from like thinking beyond uh, residential in a way that then also accounts for the fact that the highway is not going anywhere, right? And we're always going to be within like close proximity to that. And well, the, um, yeah. So the only thing I would, oh, sorry, go ahead, Mark. Just to be clear, look, the, 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 um, the zone proposed is neighborhood commercial. Now that allows commercial, allows office, it allows all, a whole range of right. different things, right. mm -hmm. but it also allows residential. Right. And so right now, most of the, you know, the, the, we really hadn't decided, right. see, with all due respect, we hadn't decided on a density for that piece of property before. Yes. Right. Um, and so now the question is before us, what should, what's the right density? Is it 29 to the acre? Is it 43 to the acre? 
um, you know, the, the neighborhood, the Boston Avenue is 14 to the acre, which is basically a duplex or single family. Okay. Um, and so I would, I would suspect that um, the Mercado is probably 43. I don't know if it's that, it might even be more, I guess. But um, so, you know, that's, so it's, it's a discussion at this point in time. So, yeah. So, you know, there, there could well be something other than residential there. There's okay. no question about it. And that would be allowed. Yeah, that's all I was trying to clarify. Thank yeah. you. Hey, Mark, Tom again, I had a quick question for you. Sure. What, what, what's kind of realistic though, do you think for developing that spot based on its size? Like what kind of density are we most likely talking about? Well, the thing about that particular property, if I, would, if, if I separate myself from the, the comments that Tina and Filomeno made, um, the thing about the property is it's, it's got, it's dimensionally suggestive of something more of a little plan, you know, a little a plan, you know, a, you know, something other than just some apartments sitting there, but 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 a true mixed use project. It's near the freeway. It's got you know, and it's, and it's got the ability to do that. Um, I understand people are you know concerned about density. There's no question about it. Um, I do, however, appreciate the, the, the process that, that Michael has put before us, which would be one that sets the density as we had it before, which I assume would be the 29 per acre, which is what pretty much everything else is, uh, other than Boston. And, but allows, it keeps the door open. If somebody wants to come in and satisfy some conditions and you know do some things that are good for the neighborhood and so forth that you would they would be allowed to go beyond that. Am I, am I phrasing that correctly, Michael? Michael, am I characterizing that right? Yeah, I think that's a correct understanding. And what's the what's the name of that process? What do you call that? Just a... uh, the process would be the plan development permit process. Okay. So it's essentially what it means is is that it, in the current format, uh, as a standard process, all things being equal, ultimately the final decision is made by the planning commission. Uh, in this one. So it would go to a vote by the planning group and then ultimately the planning commission, um, you know, for on, on a specific project. What we're doing is, and again, is, is that, you know, for, for some of the people who haven't been to some of these meetings before, and I apologize, uh, I don't think my daughter likes the, uh, um, the proposal that I'm presenting tonight. So if you hear Clearly them she screaming in the background, it's, she's, I think that's what her reaction is to. Uh, but the, um, the, you know, we've had these discussions with the group before, clearly the, the recommendation w starting with the MOU and as Philomena mentioned, there was a lot of thought and comment that went into that or thought, you know, and work that went into that from not only the community members, but environmental health coalition and, uh, shipbuilders, you know, planning group members. So I, I don't mean to, we don't mean to, to throw a wrench or to create something that will ultimately um, create issues with the overall plan. It, what we're responding to is, is as we were identifying the zone and as we were looking at sort of moving this, the plan update forward and understanding that the recycling yard as it exists today is a concern for a lot of community members. Is there another option that could at least be identified in the plan they could then be vetted further in the future with a specific development project that addresses the community's needs and, and provides a new use. If ultimately the group does not want to move forward with that approach, you know, we can continue to set, stay within the framework of the MOU. Uh, but it was something that we felt was, you know, a consideration that we wanted to just bring again tonight. Uh, and we will continue to sort of move the plan update forward uh, and address all the other issues and, and complete the MOU, you know, consistent with what I outlined tonight and in previous meetings. If, if we do that, if we, if we just leave it untouched um, as to what we had before, which is basically the underlying, as Klaus has mentioned, we decided before keep the zoning as, as it was, or the, the, the densities as we had them in 2013. Do you need a motion from us tonight or can you just move forward? So, I, you know, I kind of wanted a motion on the, just on what was presented tonight. Okay. Um, I, it, it is helpful, helpful for me if you want to discuss it further, because we still need, you know, we'll take the input that we received on the rec element. We have to draft the plan itself. Um, and so, 
So there, there will be another chance to, to review the final draft plan, um, probably at the March meeting. Uh, and so, um, you know, that, that's something that, that we'll work through, but it's always helpful to, you know, when we've had these robust discussions to get some form of concurrence or a recommendation from the group so that we can continue to move forward. Right. Um, what, uh, what's the pleasure of the board? I don't, uh, <laughs> there hasn't been a tremendous amount of interaction uh, on this. I mean, in the sense of the rest of it, other than just the, the, uh, the recycling yard. Is there anybody here that, that would make a motion, for example, to um, support the zones and um, information that Michael has put forward tonight, um, but not take a position on the increase of density on the recycling yard, but just the basic information that he and That's where I tend sure. to be, Mark. Yeah, you do. Sorry, go Mark. ahead, Klaus. I'm sorry, Klaus, go ahead. Yeah, I, I'd make that motion, Mark. Okay, is there a second? I'll second it. Yeah, I'll, okay. Okay, all right, so. Uh, is there any discussion on that motion? And that's, that's basically to adopt this. And Mark, I just wanted to, wanted to know that there's a couple of messages in the chat. Um, Philomena asked if the subcommittee can meet to review. And David Zajic uh, commented the FYI for housing density discussions. Um, a picture is worth a thousand words. Right, I, I get it, yeah. I'm sorry, what, did Phil, what was Philomena's comment, Liz? She said, can subcommittee meet to review? You know, we can, but, but it, I mean, I, I don't know. Um, then we have to set up a subcommittee. You know. Our existing subcommittee that created the MOU. The subcommittee what? I think that at this point, the, um, you know, what we're moving forward with is the, the parameters of the MOU and, and, and the, you know, ultimately it's, it's up to the group to make this right. The, the, the board as a whole to make this recommendation. And I want to reiterate that this is, um, you know, we, we, we just, we want to, we want to move this forward. We don't want to necessarily create uh, time constraints on that. So. No, and I mean, Philomena, the, the, this this really this fulfills the MOU, which you know well. The whole this, the area is down around your your neighborhood of Boston, and on Main Street now um, are exactly what you had suggested in the MOU for densities and land use. Um, are you okay with that? Okay, so um, we're. Can you just repeat the, the motion? Because I th think. Uh, Part of my neighbors didn't hear it fully, and um, I was a little distracted trying to read. The motion is simply to to make a motion to uh, approve basically this map of land uses. Uh, these all everything that all the residential, all the residential in yellow and green would be a 29, 8, 29 units per acre. That's one unit for every one thousand five hundred square feet. Um, the um, uh, it looks like, uh, yeah, all right. Hector's battery's gone, so he's taken off. Um, and that would be, so all the things in yellow and green is 29 per acre, except with the, 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 the sort of the um, orangey beige color, so, the Boston Avenue residential, is, I think that's 14 to the acre. Am I right, Michael? Correct. Uh, blue and green, zero units, the, no residential would be. No, no, not blue. I'm sorry. Yeah, you're right. I'm, yeah, I'm blue. Kidding. No, no, no. You just you said uh, you said green, but and I just and wanted I was, to clarify. I um, realized, yeah. Since this is just since it's recording, yellow twenty nine units per acre, um, orange fourteen units per acre, uh, and like I said, you know what? Uh, I'll let you go ahead. And that the re the motion on the table was to uh, to uh, recommend approval of the map as presented tonight. All right. Um, Uh, Mark? Yeah. Thank you for clarifying. Okay, you're welcome. 
I have one one last comment. Uh, there's uh, if we postpone it and let them study it a little bit more, maybe we'll get more input from the recycle yard because the recycle business is actually going out of business. And maybe if we give them a little bit of time and, and sweeten the pot a little bit for them, uh, it could be beneficial to the community. No, I, I see, yeah, yeah, I don't know. I, I, I think um, there's a motion on the, on the table that's yeah. been seconded. Yeah, let's let's move on with that. Um, so I think what we have to do is vote on this thing. The only way I know to vote is by voice. So I'm just going to call the roll, and you tell me, Tom. Tom, you have to. Con, Tom, can you tell me if you're voting for it? Yes. Okay. Uh, Tina. Yes. Matt, I assume you're yes. David, Dave, I assume you're a no. Yes. No. <laughs> you mean correct. You're a no. Yeah. I'm, I'm a no. Klaus, it's your motion, so I assume you're voting for it. Philomena. Yes. Dennis? Yes. Okay, the motion passes. So I think we I think we made some progress. Michael, are you happy? Uh, Mr. Chair, it is always, uh, I am always happy when I attend these meetings, uh, regardless of the outcome, so. Okay. I think it's a pretty uh, good outcome. I, I think there's been a lot of interesting no. discussion about the, about the recycling yard. Yeah, no, and, and in all sincerity, I, I am uh, appreciative of the, the outcome and, and the, the input that we received tonight. We will move forward um, and uh, look forward to coming back next month, uh, you know, with more information. I'll be in touch with you, Mr. Chair, about Sort of the items, but at this point, it's really just drafting the the strikeout underline. Excuse me, the the changes to the 2013 plan, continuing the mobility analysis, and and when I have sort of a timeline for when that is completed, I'll let you know when you know when we can anticipate a final vote on the on the full plan itself, and when that'll be out for review. Great. Do you, do you anticipate another workshop in February? I don't know if we'll necessarily need like a full item. It may just be sort of a recap on okay. sort of the items and then we may sort Good. of wait until until then. But I think, right. like I said, we're we're closer to um, to sort of getting all of the components together and um, and putting putting the revised draft plan up for public review. Got it. OK, if there's nothing more, I think we all should thank Michael Prince and Jonathan Avila for their for their work on our behalf. Yes. And I'd like Thanks to thank all of you. Yeah, ahead, thank man. you all. No, it's, appreciate all thank of you your so work. Much. And I'd like to thank everybody that took part in it tonight. Um, okay, let's let's move moving on the agenda. We don't have any minutes to approve. Minutes, trying to craft minutes out of these meetings is a difficult thing. So I'm not sure what we'll do. Uh, we've got some st some um, Standing reports that we normally go through. We're back to our, our regular agenda now. Uh, Andrew Harvey from District 8, are you here? I saw you. Hi, Mark. Yes, I'm here. Uh, do you have a report? Maybe just a like one sentence? No, I just wanted to introduce myself. So I'm Andrew Harvey. I'm the community rep under Supervisor Nora Vargas. And um, yeah, I just wanted to say, say hello. I'm gonna add my contact information in the chat if you'd like to reach out. Uh, before I was on the county, I was with the Chicano Federation. So I was doing a lot of outreach in uh, our child development center in Barrio Logan. So I'm, I'm happy to be here and uh, excited to, to be on the call tonight. Thank you. Great, thanks. Uh, I'm sorry, District 8, uh, I, I, I misspoke. Yeah, you're District 1. Ed, um, is Eddie Padilla here? I don't see his name. Um, from the mayor's office, Stephanie Estrada, do I see her? Nope. Um, Michael, do you have any other reports? Uh, the only thing I would say is if you had any questions for me regarding the uh, elections, I don't recall if that was an item on the agenda tonight. It is on, it is on the agenda, and I'm afraid so, it's going to be a complicated one, yeah. So it's so coming, then, it's going to be, it's, it's basically next. Okay, Ron so I'll, I'll be around for that. Okay. Ron, what's up with the uh, port? Yeah, good evening, everybody. Um, I just want to say that the new year has brought some 
big changes at the Port of San Diego. Uh, yesterday, the Board of Port Commissioners uh, approved a five-year contract for our new CEO and president, Joe Stuyvesant. Uh, he will start on February 1st. Uh, Joe was a, uh, was a career Navy aviator for 30 years, and he is currently the executive director at Navy Region Southwest. So uh, he is coming in to take over for Randa, Randa Coniglio, who was our president and CEO for five years. Uh, we also have uh, two new commissioners. Uh, one is Sandy Naranjo, who is going to represent National City. She's taken over for Duki Valderrama, who was on the board for 16 years. And we're gonna miss Duki, but we welcome Sandy. She's an environmental justice advocate and she formerly worked for EHC. Uh, we also have a new commissioner from San Diego, Jennifer Lassar. Uh, she will be joining us. She's the former, she's the founder of Lassar Development Consultants, and we look forward to her joining the board. And then uh, we also have uh, Rafael Castellanos, who was reappointed to the board. So we all know Rafael, and we're happy to have him back. Uh, he is a great advocate for the community and for, for the port as a whole. So he'll be, he'll be rejoining us. Uh, one of the things that I, that I want to mention to you guys is that at yesterday's meeting, our new chairman, Michael Zuchett, uh, mentioned that environmental justice is a top priority for him. Uh, so when you look at the, at the makeup of our new board, it's a more progressive board than we probably had before. And uh, there will be a great emphasis on environmental justice and on the port doing right by the environment throughout uh, uh, the Port Tidelands, including Barrio Logan. Uh, so I'll just, I'll just stop right there and say thank you guys and uh, let's, let, let's have a great 2021 and uh, hopefully we'll get beyond the COVID uh, pandemic. Thanks guys. Thank you, Ron. Um, Lucas Cruz, are you with us? No? Um, I think that's all. Uh, the Barrio Logan Association, uh, Hector, Hector was on for a while, but he, he, uh, he's off now. Uh, we don't have the police department with us. So let's go to non-agenda. Is there any non-agenda communication from the public? Anything just generally that anybody would like to say? Do you see anybody out there, Liz? Yes, there's a chat message from Becky Rapp. I'm going to unmute her once again. Good evening, Barrio Logan Planning Group. My name is Becky Rapp. I'm a mother to three teens and youth group mentor. I was very concerned regarding the UT article on December 31st when I read recently regarding plans for a $1 million marijuana bureau department to enable marijuana businesses. Plans include the possibilities of increasing the limit of marijuana dispensaries and allowing marijuana businesses near churches something churches from all over the county have been tirelessly fighting. San Diego does not need more marijuana businesses and churches need our support. Please suggest to the city that they uphold their current regulations and not increase the number of marijuana businesses, keeping present policies and rules intact. As anxiety and mental health issues rise, teens are resorting to unhealthy outlets such as marijuana use. Dave King, the executive director for San Diego, Imperial Valley, High Drug Trafficking Area, or HIDA, as it is known to the City Council aides here tonight, stated we are in the midst of a vaping epidemic. Emergency department visits and admissions for any related marijuana misuse has increased by 89%, and hospitals are seeing on average 29 discharges a day due to marijuana, and it remains the primary drug of choice for youth ages 12 to 17. I appreciate for you for letting me speak tonight. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Becky. Do we have anybody else, Liz? Yes, Kathleen uh, Lippitt. Looks like she's muted. Good Great. evening, Chair, Planning Group members. Happy New Year. Thank I you. wanted to uh, inquire whether your, your community probably has noticed, as many of us in the public have, the 
inundation of marijuana billboards throughout the city and throughout the state. But there is now some good news that at least one of the more egregious strategies used by this industry, the in-your-face billboard advertising, the court has said no to. The Superior Court recognized billboard advertising on interstate highways undermines Prop 64's promise not to advertise to children. They ruled against the California Bureau of Cannabis Control that loosely had interpreted a 15 mile radius from California borders would satisfy the intent of Prop 64. Not surprisingly, marijuana billboards began sprouting up all along interstate highways. But the court has directed that BCC contact all marijuana business owners, informing them that within the next 30 days, they can no longer advertise on interstate highways. Research and prevention have long known that outdoor advertising, especially billboards, is an industry strategy to reach the vulnerable populations, children, those in addiction, treatment, and recovery. And youth are known to view marijuana more favorably when they are exposed to such advertising. Responsible adults should not wait for either the city or marijuana businesses to begin removing these public eyesores but it is left to the rest of us to begin reporting billboard advertising to the BCC and the city, especially if they are within a thousand feet of sensitive uses, schools, churches, parks, and youth oriented facilities. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Kathleen. Appreciate it. Um, anybody else, Liz? I don't Mark? see any, anybody else. On, oh wait, one more. Um, Oh, no, that's still Kathleen. Yeah, no, no, okay. no more. Hey, uh, Mark, uh, this is yep. Dave Dewey. I have a seven o'clock CV-19 shot in the morning, so I'm going to sign off. You're going to get your uh, CV shot? No, yeah, because I'm, I'm over 80. Congratulations. I'm doing mine tomorrow afternoon. Um, I'll, I'll get the fresh stuff. <laughs> Make sure you get <laughs> some for me if you don't Keep mind. Keep me posted of what happens. Say okay. goodnight. Thank you. Thank you. Good luck. All right, moving luck, on, David. I was just saying good luck to David. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, he's getting the stuff we just manufactured. <laughs> <laughs> the marijuana? No. All right, so everybody, let's go to item eight. Item eight is a, is a very important item. It's, it's a complicated one. I'm going to need everybody's attention, and I'm going to need your participation. Here's the situation. We, have, we, we were about to have our annual vote voting of, of membership last March when the virus hit. And so we shut down and we've been doing, we've been Zooming ever since. Um, so during that period of time, it's been kind of strange. We haven't been able to hold that election. Um, we had a full slate. Everybody was, was ready to go. I even, uh, I even had the slate right here. Um, and, um, uh, and so it, it got put on hold. I just recently got a thing from the city uh, that I sent around to everybody as soon as I got it, um, uh, just, just recently, it, it just came out on the 19th. Um, the 19th is, is yesterday. Um, the, the, the city council has now decided that yes, we can and we should hold our, our belated election. There's no anticipation that we're going to be doing anything other than virtual meetings into the future here. Um, so let's talk about what that means. Um, March is March is the, the standard election month for all community planning groups throughout the city. We, 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 we have elections every two years so that we can stagger people. And fundamentally, we've got 15 members of the board that are voting members and there's there's seven one year and there's eight one year and you know the the the, uh, the, the seats become vacant and people run for them. Um, and so we usually we we elect this year we're going to, we're going to elect uh, seven people um, and or reelect some people are running again. The thing about it that's going to require everybody's participation. Oh, the the, the, the the city outlines a couple of different ways that one could hold the election. Our, 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 and, and so everybody should have that. And if you haven't read it, I wish you would, every one of you, please 
look for it in your email box. If you can't find it, tell me and I'll send it out to you. It's a it's an attachment that I sent to you all um, that outlines the city's um, position and the requirements for, for elections. Most of the requirements for elections are contained in our uh, bylaws, which you all also have somewhere. Presumably, and if you don't have them, just let me know, or you can get them, you can download them online. So here's a couple of things. Um, the deadline for candidates for the March general election shall be prior to the February noticed regular or special meeting of the full planning group. So that means that anybody that's going to run has to do it before February 1st. There has to be an election subcommittee formed of our board in January. That's no later than January, and that's now. Uh, we would have probably, if, if the city had come to us a bit earlier, we might have actually tried to start this process in December, which is what we've normally done, but we just learned about it uh, literally hours ago, days ago. So, um, tonight we have to establish a uh, election committee. The job of that election committee is to manage the election and it's going to be, it's not going to be easy this year. It's not, we have, we have a whole process that's outlined in our bylaws, which is pretty standard. Uh, members, people, people sign up to be members, as you all know. Um, and then we keep, we keep a, a, a register of the members. Uh, the Environmental Health Coalition last year pointed out to me that uh, there were a few that they felt weren't accurate. I have I didn't get around to, to amending those because we were shut down, but I guess we'd do that. My question is how in the world do you now determine if a voter is a member, but that's something that the that the election committee needs to set up. Uh, you need you still need to be eligible. There's some some there are some options. Uh, there, there are basically two different options. One is electronic voting, and there are some, um, you know, there are some there are some sites that you can do that that, that automatically. There's a thing called electionbuddy.com, which has got a friendly quality about it. There's eballot.com, electionrunner.com. Those are three that we know of that you can hold elections. I'm not really sure how you'd make sure that everybody uh, was a member. I suppose you could do that. It would be, it would be, you know, it would be a lot of a lot of work for the election committee. The other is a paper ballot voting, and that's, uh, you know, how you you know you obtain a ballot. You have to you have to get the ballots out to people, and so forth. And then you still have to make sure that every ballot that's sent back is through a member. Um, in my own mind, I think it's also going to be a little unfair for candidates because people don't know what's going on. But here we are. Um, I think almost the candidates almost have to go and try to get people to vote for them or something. Um, you know, when, when we have when we have meetings where we're all together, there are people there. It's, it's got a quality about it. The people that are running, um, Matt Carr, Dave Douay, Dennis O'Connor are running. This is for uh, own business owner seats. Are running uh, again to 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 serve another term. Uh, Rachel Luis Soprado and uh, Prado and Erica Martinez and Chris Zertucci are running and it's a, so it would be new members. So there's six people running had, had back in March had been running for those three seats. For the resident seats, um, we get uh, basically these would be all there'd be three seats available there. We, we did get some residents that that that. Uh, uh, the left left the group because they moved. We had, um, I don't know, you know, Eric and anyway, there were three of them over the over the last years. But John Alv Alvarado, Julie Corrales, Carla Garcia, Michael Mijos, and Kenny Serrano are all running. And then there's a school nonprofit, which is Marisa Cassani and Anthony White. So. I mean, we have, we have, I mean, it'd be a simple matter, I suppose, to go back through and, and reaffirm that these people still want to run. Uh, the bylaws in the city request requires, however, that we advertise the thing and allow anybody else that might want to run to throw their hat in the ring. Um, their virtual hat, their virtual ring. So um, that's that. The, the, the job ahead of us right now is to come up with an election committee. Now, anybody that's running can't be on the election committee for obvious reasons. 
So that means the election committee has got to be made up of any of these people, or maybe all of these people. That's an idea, which would be Tina, Tom, Josie, Hector, Philomena, and Klaus. I think those are the only board members that aren't running. Um, because right now we've only got a uh, we've only got a ten member board because of people dropping out. So what do you think? Who wants to who wants to take charge of this and 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 formulate and run the election committee? Okay. Like the, I, I think um, I think what you said is right. I think we should all be a part of it. Um, just I mean I know for me personally. Um, I can help out, but my schedule is pretty packed and I'd, I'd love to be able to help out in any way that I can. But I'm, I'm pretty much working every day from sunrise to sunset. So I don't, I don't have too much time available, but I'm willing to help however I can and fill in like when someone else can in, um, in the committee. Who could chair the committee and make sure it, gets, it moves along? Who are, so Hector's not here. Um, Hector's not here. Josie's not here. She's not here. Man, we really need them to participate in this conversation. I know. I, and, and the problem is we have to do this tonight. I mean, and, and, and it's, it's... I think since they're not here, then they should be appointed. <laughs> <laughs> we can appoint I second that can... motion. I second that motion, Matt. That was a motion. <laughs> That's you know, I was actually, I was actually, <laughs> I was actually voted in as this is a real. I was actually voted in as chair of a group when when I missed a meeting. Um, <laughs> it wasn't a joke, and I was the worst. I was the worst chair they ever had. I served them right. Anyway, Matt, are you volunteering to chair the committee? I'm running for office. I don't think I can. Oh, that's right. I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. no, you can't. That's right. Or, that's or I would. If it weren't for that, I would. Uh, how about Tom? Tom. I definitely, with Klaus and that, I, I want to participate. I can't lead. I just, I got so much going on. I'd, I'd be too unreliable. I just have a hectic schedule, but I definitely would want to participate. So I think the main thing that this group has to decide on is how, how do we do it? You know, is it, is, is it going to be virtual? Is it going to be paper ballots? And how do you do that? Um, I would say virtual through one of those um, apps or programs that you had mentioned. Yeah. Uh, that seems the most reasonable and, you know, as far as like our abilities and it's going to help, uh, it's going to help us definitely organize it and put things Mark, together. I have a question about how do you verify the requirement for members having been to a meeting in the past year? You know, um, we can't. I mean, that's another issue because because we've not had any meetings. I mean, normally, um, what we've done in the past is that what we the, the the bylaws are ambiguous. They talk about a meeting in the last year. That's you, you have to have attended a meeting in the last twelve months to be a, to be a voting member. On the other hand, they, there, there's another section, as I recall, and I've been through this before. That, that sort of indicates that once you have signed up as a member, you are a member. You don't have to redo that every year. Um, so I have a large, you know, I have a large binder full of people that have signed up. Uh, and, and particularly, I think it was the 2016 election. Like, there was a, a sort of a run on, uh, on members. I think there are some in there that are duplicates and some that are signed up for two different things. There's not many of them, but there are some. Um, but so I, I, the only thing I know to do, Matt, and let's, I'm, I'm looking for advice from you all. The only thing I would know to do would be we just have to rely on people that are already members because nobody's been nobody signed up this year. I mean, I haven't gotten any anybody signing up. We don't even know if really who's out there attending a member, you know, a meeting. Um, it's, it's a really bizarre thing. And I don't know, Michael, do you have any advice? Michael Krenz? <laughs> um, so I, one of the things in terms of, at least in verifying people who have attended, I mean, I think we could look back and see in the recordings, perhaps as part of Marisa's Zoom meeting, 
Um, I don't think you're required to register for this, but maybe there's some form of uh, in the recording, you know, uh, verifying somebody's attendance at a meeting. That's the, would, there is some potential there. The, the, the way it's the, the way it really operates is that it's up to people to present themselves. In other words, they fill out a thing and then they say, "Yes, I attended a meeting." Right. It, it's it's not that we go look for people that have attended a meeting and say, "Do you want to sign up?" Um, I mean, we always have the sign up sheet out there, but a lot of people come and don't sign. Up. So just is because there, you come to a meeting any, doesn't mean you're a member. Mark, is there any recommendation on, on that letter from the city as far as this past year and in, in that part of it, that aspect? No, they, they, they just, it really just, it, 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 it outlines, you know, the mail-in ballots are two different ways of mail-in ballots and then also the, that's all it does. You know, it talks about ballot drop-offs and all that kind of stuff, that, which we could arrange. Um, I mean, the, the other issue is you've got to go out and decide, is there anybody else that wants to run besides these people? And I don't know, we'd have to decide, we'd have to find out if these people even still want to. Yeah. Mark, I wanted to remind you of something. You mentioned 2016, but it was, I believe it was 2017, the last uh, list that you had was when we when you had the elections that you had to do in a, sp a special election um, and then you actually cleaned up some of the duplicates because um, we, we did although yeah. although although the latest one um, the EHC poured over it and found I don't know eight or ten out of the hundreds um, that they, they but anyway I, I think I've got that somewhere um, I've got the book here at home. I've got all the, the you know, it's all the hard copies. I, so I, I would guess that I, my, my assumption would be if you had a, tell me what you guys think, but if you did a digital one with one of these sites, uh, with these apps that, that do it, um, you you would, the, the, I, I presume the app comes in and it has somebody's name on it and somebody has to sit around and check them against the names. Again, what I, what I don't feel comfortable with is, and Michael, maybe you can help with this. I don't feel comfortable with getting out the information, um, you know, as to who's running. And, and you know. Right. I think it would have to all be done digitally. I mean, there's the process, um, you know, I, I think that's, and unfortunately I don't have like a really good example offhand. I mean, we could potentially use the plan barrio website and perhaps coordinate it where we direct people there and ask them to fill out a form um if they're interested in running um you know i mean if if we wanted to do that i mean the other option is just sort of to put it on on the website in an email di um, distribution list to sort of say here's you know um you know fill out your information and, and verify you know provide us with your sort of verification that um, your uh, that you've that you meet the eligibility criteria for the group. Uh, another thing could be Survey Monkey. Um, you know that's another potential option as well. I know that one um, Elizabeth Alley with EHC wanted to be unmuted because I believe there's some questions and concerns. And then Julie mentioned digital would disenfranchise older folks. There should be ability to drop off ballots. No, I so, I want, I'm concerned about the same thing. I mean, yeah, I think at least the, the one that, that, that reviewed our. Uh... So I think in terms of the, certainly the, the procedures would allow for an in-person drop-off box, you know, or drop. It's just it's somebody who is obviously not running for the election would need to sort of address that and administer that in in a way. Um, I again apologize because I know that this is a very um, tricky process, uh, and you know we're we're still trying to allow some new members to be on board through the elections procedures while under you know while conducting this in uh in a pandemic so hey yeah, there sorry. um sorry could I, I i saw my microphone got unmuted this is ali from ehc um we had a couple of questions um, could i ask those now or should i wait until a little bit later 
Uh, you, I, I, the questions about the election? Yeah. Yeah, go ahead. Um, so first question that I have is, have we considered revisiting how we define a member of the community who's eligible to vote given the circumstances of the pandemic? Um, and just as an example, um, the City Heights Planning Group allows any resident to vote who can prove that they live in the community with like a utility bill or something. Well, that's not what our bylaws say. That's the problem. Mm -hmm. Michael, Michael, what other, um, what are the other communities doing? Do you know? I don't. I mean, this, this process is literally just was released to the other groups and, um, you know, you're the first group that I've attended that's actually had a formal discussion on this so far. What if we did like a, a hybrid of both? I mean, is there any anything wrong with doing the virtual and and the ballot? Uh, yeah, and that was what problem. Klaus. That was exactly what we were going to suggest, also, because um, what we've seen from the community is that it needs to be a hybrid process in terms of participation, because there are a lot of folks who do want to participate, but because of the digital divide, just are not going to um, log on and vote um, or take any. Um, you know, surveys that are virtual, but if you give them something that's pen and paper, they will definitely participate, um, especially the elderly community. Um, yeah, so we just did want to highlight that. Um, and we were also asking, we were also going to ask um, in terms of the timeline of the election, because I know the planning group is talking about this process being a little bit rushed. Is there any way to put the election back to April, perhaps, to give you guys a, a bit more time to prepare? Yeah, I mean that, that's that's fine, Ellie. The, the, the only the, the situation is is that our bylaws and the bylaws of all the planning groups in the city determine that the that the election is March. It's a it's a there's a there's a clear determination. You have to have a uh, it's a whole process. You have to have a uh, um, a um, election committee established no later than, than January. Nobody can can can. Uh, can claim, you know, can can uh, put themselves forward as a, as a candidate any later than the than the February than the February, um, and um, and then there's also you can't you, you February is also a drop dead deadline for people registering to be a member, you know, and it's it's complex and we you know we ran it before. I mean, it took a lot of manpower to just run it the old way, um, and what we did then is is that we just simply. You know, the word got out, people were coming to meetings, and so the word got out there's an election. And then the ballots, we didn't send ballots out. They had ballots, we had ballots there. You came in and you filled out a ballot. You guys remember it because you were handing out ballots. And so the, the um, um, and, and then we, we had it set up. We actually got help arranging and organizing it from the League of Women Voters. And they, and so we had a third party. Um, and, um, and then they, uh, they, I think actually the elect, yeah, they, they went through and um, counted the votes and so forth and so on. So there's a, there's, a, I, I mean, I think we could just try to do that. What I'm concerned about mostly is the communication of getting the word out to people and getting, getting people to, to do it. Yeah, and I think that's what we're concerned about too, is that we, we just want to make sure we do our due diligence, letting the community know that the election is happening. And we also um, you know, want to avoid any sort of voter suppression in terms of um, people being eligible to vote um, on the folks who represent them um, on the planning group. And not I, have, I, it um, seems to me as though the simplest way to do that is to just go go back to the people that were that registered before. I don't know. I mean, or um, would the election committee, like the election subcommittee, perhaps be able to develop some sort of way for folks who attend the February planning group meeting to register online or um, submit some sort of analog form? To you know, I, I think you, Ali, you know, you know exactly who's in the, you know exactly who's in the, in the, that's been registered. And I think it's, you know, I mean, it was all set up, by the way, we were just right there. And boom, yeah, so I know, I remember. And so, and so, I don't know. I mean, and for, it seems to me as though, with regard to that, um, unless there's a lot of new people who moved in the community and taking part in the, in the group or something, which I haven't seen, I mean, I would think that that membership would be pretty, pretty up to date. Is, do you have any reason to believe it wouldn't be? Yeah, and I think our, our main concern is, you know, for folks who would like to participate in 
voting on who represents them on the planning group, um, regardless of whether or not they've had time to participate um, or attend a planning group meeting. And well, we all represent everybody, I think, don't we? Mark, it's Julie here hopping in. I think I think an issue is that, um, and I know Michael alluded to it, but there's been folks that have been attending that we've been recruiting and bringing, you know, for the CPG who might not have attended previously, um, but in the last year have come. So they're not on the roster, they, but they've been showing up. They've been participating in the conversations. Um, well, maybe, and, maybe you should, maybe you should have them fill out applications, and we'll, uh, maybe maybe you should do that. Then. I mean, have, why don't you have them? So we can just add them to the list. Now it's a hard copy list, but I don't know. I don't know how to convert it. Now there are hundreds of people on it. So to convert it to digital would be a killer of a job. We've got everybody's email address, but it would be a terrible job. Uh, what, one last quick suggestion that I, because I feel like we're we're getting into the weeds, and this is something that the election committee that has either been appointed or has been voluntold <laughs> at this point, okay. um, they uh, that they're they're going to get into the weeds. So I'm wondering if there's a um, can be a special meeting or maybe something that they release so the public can take a look at what they what they're proposing um, for the election process and, and can provide feedback on that. Does that, I does think, that make sense? Uh, you know, I, I mean, I, I don't know. I mean, I, I, listen, <laughs> Julie, it's it's we have to do it right now and it has to get done. Um, is, is there any reason to believe there? That, that there are different people that are going to want to run for office than have been than uh, was a year ago. Um, no, I know that we haven't. Okay. I, I I know EHC was wanting to check in with all the candidates that hadn't declared themselves last year um, to see if they still wanted our support because we were helping them get you know do a little GOTV. Um, we haven't gone around to that yet, but at this point, there's not. I mean, except for possibly Marissa. I know she's going through a lot right now. This might not be something that she wants to take on, but um, I, I know uh, so. Uh, there's also additional seats, right? Mario Chacon, Panchito, uh, Eric, that will, we'll, you know, we don't know who's running for that, but um, I think- Well, they, 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 they've got the opportunity to, to, to jump in here then. I think, you, you know, but my point is, you know who they are. So mm -hmm. if there are people that want to that want to put their name forward, then maybe you can be helpful by getting them to come forward. So maybe we get the, maybe like by the yeah. what, end of so January, my... we get everyone to recommit that they're running and then maybe, as far as the roster goes, maybe we say anyone who has attended a meeting virtually in the last year is eligible to be a member, but they need to submit an application by, I don't know what, end of February or something? It's gotta be February, yeah. So um, I think that all I know to, why don't we do this, I guess, I, I don't know. Um, you guys are okay uh, accepting classes theory that we, the Tina, Tom, Josie, Hector, Philomena, are the, the, the election committee, it's everybody who's not running. And, and um, if you're good with that, if anybody objects to that, they have some reason they can't participate, I will take it upon myself to set up a Zoom meeting between all you guys and then we can zero in on this stuff. Does that make sense? Yeah, I think that works since we're, we're so limited to our members that can participate. In, in, in the meantime, if, Michael, if you would be, so kind is to find out what other communities are doing. Yeah, I, I will do that. And then I can also attend the election subcommittee meeting okay. as well to sort of help facilitate um, discussion around that. All right, so every, everybody, this is, again, this is Tina, Tom, Josie, Hector, Philomena, and Klaus. Um, now you guys all think about it. Go back and read that document that came from the city. Don't you? Is there the same requirement for legally notifying everybody that we had from the previous election, Mark, that you have to notify everybody two months in advance or whatever that requirement is? Is, is that the no, same? No, notify people what? Oh, oh to, that there's an oh, election. The election posted notices, the whole yeah, deal. Yeah, yeah, you still have to do it. But it's, I don't, you know, it's. Um, there's a timeline on that, right? That's a notice of the time and day of the regular scheduled March 21 meeting with online meeting instructions, the process and deadlines, and notice the election be posted on the planning group's website, promoted on community center bulletin boards, online forum, published, email the election notice of the planner assigned to the community plan area. And so, so what would happen is that um, 
you know, whenever I, when I send out the agenda, it, it, it's a very wide um, distribution, and it and it also goes to the to a, uh, the planning department, and they distribute it, I believe, to all the local. Yeah. So that's the only way I know we do it. We just send that out as a separate note. And I, I would suggest we do that along with the, we'll, we'll send the uh, slate along with it too. Okay. All right, folks. Um, do we need a, I think we're just to take an executive decision and appoint you people. Everybody is the committee. So we've done that. Sounds and, good, Mark. And, and we will, um, we'll contact you. So moving right along. Um, Teamwork. Uh, we have one more action item and then a couple information items. Susan Baldwin is here uh, to give us a presentation on with the Parks and Recreation. Susan, I saw your name. Yeah, hi. Um, oh, I'm go. just, hi. Um, I'm just wondering, um, I, my presentation takes about 15 to 20 minutes and I'm just wondering if you all have that. I can, I can do a shortened version. Um, because I, I want to be respectful of your time. I know it's getting late. So I would, I would advise the shortened version if you can. And being, I know that you have some things you would like us to support. So if you'd be very specific. Uh -huh. about Let me, um, hang on. Let me see. Whoops. Can you give me the permission to share my screen? Liz, can yes, you? One sec yes, one second. Um, Oops. Uh-oh. Mark, is this the last presentation? Unfortunately, no. There's a couple more other information items. But... Okay, I just want to remind everybody it's it's 835, so. Yeah. Susan, can you see the share button? Um, yeah, let me just um, try and see. Okay, I think I got it. <clears throat> okay, D does everyone see? Yep. Okay, great. Um, so um, thank you for having me and I, I'll try to make this, you know, about half as long as, as it would normally be. Um, I am asking for support for, uh, for you all to take an action tonight. So um, basically, um, I'm here representing the Parks and Recreation Coalition. My name is Susan Baldwin and I am a retired planner. I worked for the uh, San Diego Association of Governments for 27 years and I also actually worked for the city of San Diego in the late 80s. And um, the Parks and Recreation Coalition, we've named ourselves PARC, is a group of volunteers who submitted a letter to the city council on November 9th asking that they not approve the park component of the complete communities, also known as Play Everywhere. Um, eight organizations and 34 individuals signed our letter and park includes professional city planners, landscape architects, architects, and community planners. Um, so um, the play, play Everywhere includes the park's master plan, which is the first in 50 years, over 50 years, the recreation element of the general plan, and a new citywide uh, park development impact fee. And um, the proposed planning documents, we believe, um, have you know, very admirable goals. The city has spent a lot of time and effort on this, these planning documents. And a major one of the goals that we think is very important and we're supported, totally supportive of is addressing the longstanding inequities in the city's park system. So um, what needs to be improved and how? Um, we, we have identified a uh, five general areas of issues with the parks master plan that we think need to be improved. And I'm, I'm gonna go through them. I have sort of a little elevator speech that I put together. It's not exactly in the same order as on the slide, but I'm just gonna go through it really quickly. Um, a summary of the major improvements that we have identified we think need to be made includes maintaining the park acreage standard, which is right now 2.8 acres per thousand residents. 
We believe that without a land standard, park deficiencies will just uh, disappear. And eliminating the acreage standard is a major change that's proposed in the PMP and is proposed because the city says we can't meet the standard. Well, I worked in affordable housing for many years in, at Sandag and, you know, we, we can't meet our affordable housing goals either, but we don't eliminate them. So we think it's really important um, given the fact that the city is growing, um, you know, and that de there's more density being proposed. We really think it's important that we maintain an acreage standard and that we try to uh, get more parkland. Um, <clears throat> the acreage standard, parkland standard is being replaced by what we th consider to be a confusing and arbitrary point system that includes both parkland and recreational amenities. So we think they pit one against the other and we think that the system devalues the need for parkland. And one example of the what we consider somewhat nonsensical nature of the point system is that a, this is only one example of course, but that a 10 square foot sign and a one acre park have the same number of points. So the, the citywide impact fee is a major uh, way of, of that there that is being proposed to fund the parks uh, system. And as you probably all know now, the, the park system is now being funded or the development impact fee system is done on a community by community basis. We think that the parks, the citywide um, de development impact fee has merit, um, but we think that more information about how much funding would be generated compared to the existing facility benefit assessment system that is uh, that is in place in many of the urbanizing communities like Mira Mesa, Otay Mesa, and um, uh, University City and the DIF system need to be provided. We really need to understand better how these, whether the, the facility benefit assessment system is being completely uh, eliminated or not. Uh, the process for allocating the park funds needs to be developed and made available for public review. This is how we would be able to know that the development impact fees that are being generated are being spent to help address the historic inequities. And that's referred to in the master plan as the prioritization framework. And we feel that that system is uh, which is embedded, which is coming forward as a city council policy needs to be defined. Um, and because we feel like a more equitable park system is promised, but we need to see how that equity is going to be implemented. Um, other issues that we think need to be addressed further in the parks master plan and recreation element include retaining language that protects parks from commercialization and privatization, um, identifying and protecting historic resources in, in the park system. Those are basically ignored in the parks master plan. We think that it's very important to protect habitat lands um, that are legally protected through the multiple species conservation program and we feel that those lands are potentially at risk because of the focus on uh, recreation um, in the parks master plan. We also believe that a design review process needs to be reinstituted and a committee needs to be set up to, for the design of parks. So basically um, parks, Park is recommending or requesting that the city work with the community planning groups and recreation advisory groups. Uh, these groups were not, were not, presentations were not made to these groups once the parks master plan was out for draft in a, in a draft form. And um, we also would like the city to work with the parks coalition on these issues that I just mentioned and other issues before bringing the plans back to the city council. And um, 
this work, we believe, although we have a number of issues that we've identified, we believe this work can be done in a timely manner. Um, and we've been very specific in, in our recommendations. Again, I have a much more thorough presentation, but um, given the time tonight, I just felt it would be um, you know, difficult to go through the whole presentation in, in full. So I, in closing, I just wanna say that parks are really important to our growing city. Um, as neighborhoods become more dense and, move, and more housing is provided to meet our needs, our housing needs, we really, really need to ensure that we have parks that are within walking distance of all our residents. And the pandemic has really underscored the need for more urban parks. Local parks and green spaces, as we all know, play a crucial role in maintaining our physical, mental, and emotional health. And we need to make sure the parks master plan and recreation element result in more park space in addition to recreational amenities, not less. So with that, I'd be happy to answer any questions you might have. Um, I can run down to the end of the slideshow and um, this is what we're, we have a motion that we uh, drafted for your consideration. And um, I'd be happy to answer any questions. I wanna note that um, Julie Corrales, who's a member of your group has been working with us on some of these recommendations and the slideshow. And so I wanna thank her for her participation um, in, in our efforts. Thank you. Great, thank you, Susan. Um, anybody have any questions or comments or ideas or thoughts? This is, by the way, this is a summary slide of, of the sure. main Sorry. improvements that we're asking for. So actually, you, you saw the, the the motion right there, which I think would you click on that and bring that back? Yeah, up? sure. Mm -hmm. I think um, does does anybody want to make a motion? Do you have anything to any questions? What we're what we're really after is um, we think that more work. You know, I think I've already said it, but I'll just say it one more time. We think more work needs to be done on this before. Um, it comes back to council. And so that's, you know, it's really important um, that, that um, more time be spent on this. And we don't think there's any reason why more time can't be spent on it. Right. And I, I, I think we as a planning group would like to be involved somehow as well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, and we're going to CPC on um, January 26th, and we'll be asking for that group to take a position as well. So what about our board? Um, anybody want to want to make a motion? I mean, I, I I don't have any problem with this motion here. Yeah, I'm good with I, it too, Mark. I think it. I you like know, it's parks. a good. Yeah. All right, Tom. So is that I your motion? Have a question. Yes, Mark, I'll, I'll make the motion. I just have is there a, a second? Bill Amanda, can you wait a minute? Hang on a second. Is there a second to the motion? Well, before I vote, I would like my question answered. But we're not voting yet. I just want to know if there's a second to the motion. I second it. I second it. I, I like parks. Okay. All right. Feel me to go ahead. I just want to clarify this is separate. It does not affect our current community plan. Correct. Yes. No. That is right. Correct. Correct. Thank you. It's a separate issue from the community plan. I mean, I they can also confirm. They intertwine because it's citywide, you know. This will, it wouldn't, um, the recommendations from the group related to this would not affect the process for the community plan update. Thank you. Is there any other discussion of the motion? Hey, Mark. Yep. Just along the lines of, and I'm all for more parks and I think, I think all of us really are and enjoy, you know, leisure time at the park. And then going back to earlier discussions this evening on the SA recycling property there at 32nd and Main Street. Yep. Then years ago when the community plan update was in process, that property 
had been targeted for a potential park at 32nd and Main Street. Right. So I just wanted to mention that. God, thank you. It got taken out of the, the, the last draft, but, but yeah, I, I, I know that. Um, anybody, uh, any other comments or questions about this? Uh, okay, well, let's let's take a vote on it then. Let's, I'm just going to call the roll again. Um, I'm for it. Tom, you made the motion, so I assume you're for it. Josie's not here. Tina. Aye. Matt, you're, you're in favor of it? Matt? Yes. Yes, please. Uh, I'm, Dave in, du I'm in favor. Dave Douay. Okay, Klaus, I know you are. Philomena, are you here in favor? Yes. Dennis? Yes. Cool. Unanimous. All right. Um, will you... Um, Susan, will you send me this, at least at least this image, if nothing else? I can um, send you send PowerPoint. You? Actually, Elizabeth has the PowerPoint. All right, um, then that's fine. Okay, so, I'll get it from you. Okay. I'll, I'll, write, I'll write it up and send it to the mayor. Yes, I'll send, <laughs> I'll send it to you, Mark. Great, thank you very much. Thank you so much. We Thanks, appreciate Susan. the support. Thank you. you. You got us when we're tired, so we did not. <laughs> Well, if I'd done the whole presentation, you might have been mad at me, so. You probably would have, yeah. yeah, yeah. Thank you. Okay, uh, next item is an information item. Uh, 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 Johnny Nguyen and Julie, Julie Adam from the city of San Diego. We need you to click out. Oh, sorry, let me stop sharing, sorry. There we go. Johnny, I see you there. Hi, Hi, Mark. Hi. Hi, Johnny. This is Julia. Uh, yeah, Julie, Julie will take over from here. I just want to say hi and wave and okay. I will mute. Hi, Mark. Thanks for having Hi, us. Julie. I'll keep this really brief. Um, I'm the project manager from the city of San Diego. Johnny and I are with the um, engineering and capital projects department, which was previously um, public works. Um, we have a um, Harbor Drive trunk sewer replacement project. Um, Johnny is going to describe the location of the project and then I'll walk you through the facts sheet. Go ahead, Johnny. Okay, so this project is a, is a sewer replacement project. It's also upsizing the existing uh, sewer pipeline. So we're just uh, following the same course alignment of the existing. Um, it starts on Imperial Avenue. If, let me see if I can zoom. In. Oh, yeah, I can't zoom in. But if you look at the the top, the top right. Imperial and Twelfth, right there. If you can zoom in, Julie, that'd be great. Yeah, Imperial and Twelfth, right there. Um, and this is because there's a there's some development that happened right there. There's a Park Twelve, uh, multi-story uh, apartment and commercial. Um, so that that triggered this upsize. But then also in addition, there's going to be future. Um, development possibly so and, and also convention center the potential for convention center um, um expansion so that's that's what triggered this um this upsizing so it goes along imperial from park or 12th to park and then it goes down park and that's where a petco park is to the north is right, right there in that big old right. lot and then it goes across the uh across the railroad tracks over here on park boulevard to Harbor Drive. And from Harbor Drive, it goes all the way down. And this is still in the downtown district. It, it doesn't get to the Barrio Logan community until about right here where it connects to on Beersley, where there is an existing pump station. That's where all the sewer collected, like in this downtown area, as well as Barrio Logan, uh, collects right there and gets pumped, pumped up to a higher elevation into a, a treatment facility. Okay. So yeah, so right there is really more the, uh, the Barrio Logan effect. Um, Harbor Drive, as as you know from right at that section, it's a it's like a bridge. It's an overpass bridge, right? And it crosses a BNSF over there as well, and um, and MTS uh, trolley. So, so yeah, at, at that at that time, yeah, we'll we'll just be going under the bridge, um, and and the lanes will still be open for both ways of traffic. But just wanted to show you the the general location of this area. Right. Perfect. Okay. Yeah, this is just informational purposes. Um, the like Johnny said, we are um, replacing a, um, an aged sewer, um, increasing the size. 
Um, currently, it's a techite pipe, which needs to be replaced. Um, we're replacing them throughout the city. Um, I think the things that you'll probably be most um, interested in is the start of construction. We're in the final stages of design. Um, this will go out to bid uh, within about a month, and then the contractor will be awarded in about six, well, we'll receive the notice to proceed within six months. Um, shovel to ground, end of the year, um, maybe beginning of 2022 at the latest. Um, so that's when you'll start to see some movement in your area down by the pump station at Beardsley. So, um, and we can go, you know, we can update you more when it gets closer to that time. Um, but we have a traffic control plan. There'll always be traffic flow through the area. Um, there'll always be um, a lane open in both directions at all times. Um, this is a tunneling project in that area. So there's only be a, a pit open down at, near the pump station. And then there'll be tunneling underneath the bridge. Oh, okay. So it's not gonna be open trench down there. So um, I don't know if you, there'll be a lot of dewatering in the pit, but um, other than that, I don't, there's not a whole lot. It's not that sexy of a project, it's a sewer. <laughs> but if you have any questions, let us know. Uh, the budget you see there, that's just an estimate. Um, but I don't know if you have any specific questions. Um, but again, we can update you as we get closer. Yeah, if David has a question about um, coordination with Sandag Bayshore Bikeway Project. And yes, we are we are coordinating with them. Uh, we we have coordination meetings once every month, and they're they're on the same track as us in terms of um, construction, um, begin beginning construction. We but we are heavily coordinating with them to make sure we're not digging because a lot of their improvements are surface, so we don't want to uh, dig over or them them doing their improvements and we 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 mess it up. So we are definitely coordinating with them to make sure that we're in and out like once only. Yeah. Yep. Definitely coordinating with the Sandag, Sandag Bikeway project, and um, they're doing more surface level um, work, um, some storm drain work, um, but it doesn't affect us, but we are coordinating with them. So do you have any specific questions? We will have a um, community liaison um, as part of this project. So we will be in touch with um, the neighborhood when we get closer. I would think mostly it's going to be about traffic control, and so maybe maybe you come back when you're you know a year from now or even two or whenever you're ready to get started and and yeah. and uh, give us some heads up on that. So yeah, exactly. I think does anybody have any more questions or thoughts or any other issues? No. I well, see no raised hands. I, I I appreciate you uh, coming to us, coming okay. and. Sure. And tell you know, us about it. It's very, very good of you. Okay. Contact us anytime if you have any questions. Um, but we'll, we'll, we'll get Is back there a raised hand? Did somebody say that there was a raised hand out there? I don't know. Liz, you see anybody? No. Okay. Well, we appreciate your time. Okay. Thank you so oh, well, much. Well, thanks for, thanks for hanging out with us. I hope you found the meeting stimulating. Yeah, it was. It was nice to hear some familiar names out there as well. I lived in Barrio Logan for three years, so. Oh, you did? Oh, cool. All right. All right, y'all. Have a good night. Thanks. Thank okay, bye. One more item, an information <laughs> item. Vicki White. Vicki, are you still with us? Yep, there you are. Hi. Yes, I'm still here. <laughs> Yes, thank you so much. Um, and I'm going to try to keep this really, really quick. Um, I won't actually um, share my my screen right now, um, out of interest of time. Um, so um, my name is Vicki White. I'm with the planning department. I'm one of Michael's colleagues. Um, I am going to be managing a project, or I am managing um, a project in the early stages to update the environmental justice policies in the city's general plan, which is our um, general guide for how the city's land and infrastructure and parks, et cetera, um, develop. Um, so we're going to be updating the environmental justice policies in that are currently in the general plan and creating a whole new chapter or element of the general plan 
that relates to environmental justice. Um, and um, it's being guided by some state guidelines that have set out some parameters that we need to follow. Um, but we can talk about that at next month's meeting if people would prefer. Um, what I really wanted to come tonight and talk to you about is that we're starting off this process with a community survey. Um, it's available online right now. It's available in English and Spanish and several other languages. Um, we're right now the tentative deadline to um, close the survey is the end of February, which is why I wanted to come tonight. Um, that may be extended, um, but I wanted to bring this information to you now because the survey is asking about what are you experiencing in your neighborhood in terms of environmental justice issues and concerns. Um, you know, things like concerns with air quality, which we know is an issue in Barrio Logan, um, concerns with um, uh, the completeness and safety of the infrastructure, such as sidewalks, bike lanes, the adequacy of parks, access to healthy foods, those kinds of things. Um, so I wanted to get that word out to you guys to let you know that this is an opportunity for you to tell us at the city um, what your environmental justice concerns are, and also acknowledging that we're all dealing with the limitations of COVID and how we can communicate with each other. And we're not able to um, speak as easily with each other too, to ask for your help in getting, letting your community members know, your family, your neighbors, your friends know that this opportunity is out there to tell us what, what you're concerned about in terms of environmental justice. Um, so that's my super, super quick version. Um, I can put the, the link to the survey in the chat as well as my email address and you can email me with requests for hard copy surveys or um, questions. And then um, Mark, if you would like, and if you would like group, I can come back um, at next month's meeting and talk in a little bit more detail about, you know, what kind of issues are included um, that we think, you know, will be at a minimum included in this environmental justice element, what the process will be, what the timeline will be, that kind of thing. I, I, I think, I'm going to guess and say we would like you to do that. I think environmental justice is a big issue in, in Barrio Logan. Yeah. Uh, and because you were you were mentioning, I mean, give me a quick a quick, thirty second definition of environmental justice. What is it? What are you okay. talking? About? Yeah. So um, so again, we're being guided by some state state parameters, um, that say that environmental justice is the equal treatment of all people, it with regard to the um, application and implementation of environmental laws. You know, that doesn't make a lot of sense. I know I, I acknowledge that. So the way I interpret that is um, that, that everyone has equal access to an environment that facilitates their health um, in terms of how the city affects its own environment. Um, so does that, that goes, did I hear you say it goes to broken sidewalks? And what yeah. about things like street lights? Exactly, because the, actually, let me pull up one slide real quick. Um, okay, but not a big, you've inspired me for it's, it's okay. a good idea, okay. Yeah, <laughs> okay, let me find my right, okay. Um, why is it not showing me the same ones as it was before? Um, um, hold on one second, I'm not finding the right. Let's go this time. Vicki, I'm going to send you a document that, that my office prepared a few years ago now that identifies all the sort of substandard environmental conditions in Barrio Logan. Yeah, that would be fantastic. Can you see the slide that's up right now? Yep. Okay. Um, let me find... Don't get too deep into it because it's... Yeah. We turned, we, we, everybody turned into a pumpkin a few minutes ago. Yeah, no worries at all. So I'm just going to show this one slide. So um, because environmental justice has to do with health, our, our ability to live healthy lives, um, that gets to things like food access, our ability to get um, physical activity, to, to, to safely do okay. physical activity. Yeah. And that's how it connects to sidewalks, bike lanes, recreation, yeah. because okay. those are the things, physical elements that allow us to safely get activity and safely live our lives. Good. Yeah. I, I, does anybody here have any questions or comments? I mean, I, I'm, I, I'm really happy you brought this to us. I think we should all um, take part in that survey. And um, 
Vicki, if you would send me the link, I will send it back out to everybody and people yes. that may not have been here tonight. Yes, we'll do. So I'll send you the link to the website and I can also yep. include the links directly to the English and Spanish versions of the survey. And that would be the best, yeah, yeah go yep. right to the survey. And then I um, would be very happy to come back next month and go through this presentation, which by that time I will also have translated into Spanish. Good. A am I wrong? Do I assume everybody else on the board would like to sort of follow along with this as it goes forward? Yeah, class agrees. <laughs> Well, thank you all so much for your attention this late at night. Um, thank I, you for staying with us, and I hope you found it stimulating. I hope you know. Hopefully, yeah. it won't interrupt your ability to sleep tonight. It's, <laughs> no, not at all. It's it's good background information for me as well to to know what's on your mind. All right, everybody now Vic, can go celebrate. Uh, celebrate yeah, Vic, Vicky can suffer with us. She's. Um, <laughs> I'm a planner. We're used to it. Yeah. Well, Michael, Michael's done a lot of suffering. Well, look at Susan Baldwin's now going to tell us about her suffering. <laughs> no, Vicky's. Uh, it's a pleasure to work with Vicki. She's one of our best planners and um, uh, she's doing that, excellent yeah. work. She's done excellent work throughout the city. So um, thank you, Vicki. Thanks for the endorsement, Michael. I appreciate it. I'll try to do my best for you. I'm sure you will. Okay. All right, everybody. Um, I'm, I'm going to, seeing the hour, I'm going to skip over the discussion of our standard questions. We need to talk about that someday when we've got some time. Um, does anybody have any new business, any old business, anything else you want to talk about? Anybody want to, anybody object to uh, adjourning the meeting? Okay. I will, I, you'll hear from me for the election committee and then uh, we'll go from there and then we'll see you next month. Right, Stay so well. Good. Okay. Bye, everybody. Thanks, Mark. Thanks, guys. Thanks, yeah. everybody. I'll Thanks. look Thanks, for that Mark. email. Mark. I'll go back and read that attachment too, Mark, on the city Please you do. sent to us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I went back and opened it up. Good. All right. Thank you, Elizabeth. Yes. Yeah, thanks, Liz. Liz you were You're great. welcome. Thank you, everybody. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Bye, everybody. Thank you, Chris. I'm happy we were able to figure it out. I'm sorry about that. Bye. I can't hear you. <laughs> Bye.